203rd in the world, Gibraltar lost their last 12 matches, including a world record defeat. Their world record defeat, 14-0 to France. Now then, Steve Clark's team have an extraordinary European adventure ahead of them, and with time running out, Scotland are here for the first of two warm-up matches before the real action gets underway against hosts Germany in less than two weeks' time. Scotland should win comfortably today, you'd think, but it will be fascinating to see who takes their chance to shine. Players lead minutes, the chance to resume peak fitness as well. There are one or two problem positions where Scotland needs solutions. All of this is about ensuring the Scots are in the best possible place ahead of Euro 2024 to come. It is just around the corner. Xander Clark is the Scotland goalkeeper. There's a Scotland debut for Ross McCrory at right back. Porteous and Hanley at the centre halves and Robertson at left back. So Steve Clark has switched to a defensive four. Gilmore and Kenny McLean in the holding roles. Ryan Christie on the right. James Forrest, his first game for Scotland since the Euro 2020 finals out on the left. And John McGinn behind Lawrence Shankland. Two goals in nine Scotland caps for last season top scorer in the Scottish Premiership. The Scotland subs, there are three goalkeepers on the Scotland bench, Clark, Gordon and Kelly, then Cooper, Hendry, McKenna, Ralston, Taylor, Tierney, Jack, McGregor and Adams make up the rest of the Scotland bench. Now, I'll give you a quick run through the Gibraltar lineup as well. Uh, Jalen Hankins is in goal. Olivero, Lopez, Sargent, and Jolly. Scanlon, the 17 year old who plays for Manchester United. Annesley and Walker are in midfield. Brito, El Hamidi, and TJ Debar, formerly of Wickham Wanderers, are the three in attack. Scotland then are all in white with blue trim. The change kit today. Gibraltar all in red with white trim. Chris Oelamo, a big chance for Steve Clark to give players minutes ahead of the action to come. Yeah, I think it is. You know, I think he, he wants to have a good look uh, at certain players in certain positions. Delighted for uh, Ross McCrory. I think that, that is deserved. You know, I think he what he's going to bring, I think there's a lot of responsibility on the likes of Andy Robertson McCrory to still get forward end product, get into those wide areas and, and, and create for others and link up with the likes of uh, Forrest and, and Ryan Christie every opportunity. Lovely sunshine on the Algarve and nice and warm as Gibraltar playing from left to right, prepared to get the game underway. Scotland from right to left in the first half. It is the penultimate step on the journey to Germany for the Scots. Thoughts of that first game in Munich and what could become of this summer when the Tartan army go to Euro 2024. The clock is ticking down and Scotland are ready and raring to go. Here is Andy Robertson in the left-back position, the Scotland captain. Quick ball to James Forrest on the halfway line. He certainly promised it would be an unconventional team selection, did Steve Clark, and he's uh, certainly given us that, though I don't think anybody is particularly surprised to see seven changes from the side that lost at home to Northern Ireland. And, of course, Scotland still have one more warm-up game to go uh, at home to Finland on Friday, Chris. I think when you experience the, the injuries that, that Steve Clark uh, has, I think you have to then think about the importance of certain players. You know where they are, their levels are, what they need, who needs the minutes. It also gives the opportunity for players to get up to speed a little bit as well and showcase what they're about for their international manager. Here's Grant Hanley on the halfway line, crosses into Gibraltar territory. Scotland have played Gibraltar twice before and beaten them on both occasions, scoring 12 overall and conceding just once. Robertson's ball into the near post and Shanklin lays it back to McLean, five yards to the edge of the penalty area. Now McCrory on his Scotland debut, shuffles the ball forward and it's whipped cross field by Ryan Christie from right to left, deep to the back post and Forrest can't keep it in play and it's gone behind for a goal kick to Gibraltar. Gibraltar nil, Scotland nil. 90 seconds gone on TalkSport 2 and Chris Iwellimo and I are really looking forward to the finals in less than two weeks. Well, it's an excellent start, isn't it, down that left-hand side? Something that's going to be the story of the match, hopefully. Robertson linking up with James Forrest. The way to pass was excellent. Files it across to the edge of the box, Shankland. He doesn't just get across the front post, but he, he pulls back at the 18-yard box. The set could have been a lot more better for Kenny McLean so he can come on and get the shot away. But that's, it, that's what you want, you know. When players get their 
You're in good control of the ball, get their head up. There's always a pass, always going forward. Really started on the front foot, Scotland. Chris and I will be there for all of Scotland's group stage matches. Germany to start the tournament, of course, in Munich. Then Scotland will face the Swiss in Cologne five days later before rounding off their Group A campaign against Hungary in Stuttgart. All of the next couple of weeks or so is leading up to that opening game. Here is McCrory on the halfway line. And now Gilmore, slightly infield and standing in the bright sunshine. Ball back out wide to McCrory on that far side of the field. There are about 700 Scottish supporters in today, all in the main stand on the near side. The 30,000-seater stadium is uh, empty, really, aside from that, and a handful of Gibraltar supporters. It is a, a very small nation, of course, Gibraltar. TJ DeBar is fouled and wins a free kick for them inside the centre circle. And Scotland, for the first time, will see the opposition have possession inside their half. Well, it was sloppy play from Kenny McLean. I've got to say, Gibraltar were on. Don't take like a flash. Dabari gets the ball. He, he rolls Ryan Portis, and he's got to be he's got to be aware of that. You know, he's, you've got to either be there quick or you've got to let the player go, follow him all the way, and then you've got to time your challenge. Giving away sloppy uh, free kick uh, in the middle of the pitch. Yeah, no danger there, but, you know, you've got to be up to speed there, Ryan Portis. Steve Clark watching on from the near side touchline. The Gibraltar free kick has come to nothing. It's pumped way over the head of the number nine, El Hamidi, and straight out of play. Poor free kick from the Gibraltar captain, Liam Walker, and a throw to Scotland in their left-back position. So Stuart Armstrong, Scott McTominay and John Souter also unavailable today. And Scotland hoping that they will play some part on Friday night. Here's Kenny McLean midway inside his own half the field. Back to Billy Gilmore. Neat ball to the right-hand side. And McCrory, just over halfway, is Christie, who says he'll play anywhere in a Scotland shirt in the finals. McCrory crosses right-footed, having made a good overlapping run. It's tucked behind by the Gibraltar defender, Bernardo Lopez, and Scotland win the game's first corner, four gone, nil-nil. Yeah, excellent play again from Scotland. I think the principles are the same if you're playing with three at the back, with wing-backs, or a four, when you've got the likes of McCrory and, and Robertson as your full-backs, getting forward, underlapping, overlapping the wide men. But it's all about end product coming in not bad there from McCrory just tries to dink it uh, to the, the middle of the six yard box there uh, it was defended well in the end plenty of white shirts forward for the corner which is taken short by Gilmore to the feet of Forrest on the edge of the 18 yard box a little nudge infield to Ryan Christie who plays a good reverse ball into the penalty area but just a little too much on it for the centre half Grant Hanley and Gibraltar have a goal kick away to our left. See, I don't, Joe, I don't think he has to, to, to look for Hanley and I think he can actually just move the ball a yard and just have a pop at goal you know, it's like one of them, you know, with the quality that he's got on his left side as well. You know, he's linking up with James Forrest there. You can hear that little give and go with James Forrest, giving it back. So, Because he does it ever so well for Celtic. He's been in some fantastic form for his club, James Forrest. But Ryan Christie, with the quality that he's got, get that shot away. No win in the last seven for Scotland coming into today. Forrest has blocked off the Gibraltar right back, Jolly. And Gibraltar have a throw in the right back position on the near side of the field as we look at it. That half of the pitch or so is in the shade, the rest is in the bright sunshine. Now McLean looking to dart down the near side, the left. Lots of Scotland fans in the lower tier in the seats, and actually many of them on their feet and down below where our commentary position is. Jolly's under pressure deep inside his own half, and he's conceded a corner again. Is it important, Chris, given that? winless run just to, to win these two games convincingly does that have any bearing on it going into the Euro 2024 finals no I think it's uh, I don't think it has any bearing on it but I think it'll do the confidence a, a world of good just having that winning feeling you know when you're a player you're scoring goals for your your club your country you know that feel good factor I think that's so so important there was a lot of positives out of that that bad runner seven games un, un, unbeaten and Robertson's out swinging corner and McCrory trying to poke it into the far post but he couldn't get on the end of it and pouncing on the ball is the Gibraltar goalkeeper, Jalen Hankins, who's making his international debut today. And Gibraltar, who endured, a, or have endured and continue to endure a chastening run of form. 203 is their FIFA ranking. They're below the likes of Liechtenstein, Tonga, the Bahamas and Bangladesh in the FIFA world rankings. Hankins has slightly miscued his clearance, but Jolly, the right back, has one possession back. Scotland quickly on the ball with McClay. You'd think Scotland possession will be in the late 70s, early 80s today. By the end of this, as the flick header from Christie goes wide in and around the penalty spot, and Scotland continuing to threaten 
but without the breakthroughs yet, still nil nil. Yeah, they've been quite aggressive, aren't they? I think with the ball, you know, when it's on to play forward, uh, they, they do so. You know, yeah, they, they've given the ball away on a couple of occasions, but when the opportunity is there to try and get in behind the certain midfield lines and defensive lines, I think you've got to you've got to take the gamble. I think Steve Clark came out and he's even said that he learned so much about the group of players and yep. uh, that and that run without a win, seven games. But there's a lot of positives to take out, take out of uh, certain performances in that run, Joe. And the qualification campaign was very impressive indeed. Back-to-back Euros coming up for Scotland and hope of real improvement after Euro 2020. And maybe there are some mitigating factors as well. Nobody expected, of course, that we would have reduced crowds because of the COVID pandemic. And that certainly didn't help Scotland, as we know, in the games that they played at Hampden Park. But renewed hope that potentially for the first time at a major tournament, and Scotland can get themselves out of that first group stage. We'll see. Well, I think that's the aim, isn't it? To go down in history, the first Scottish team to ever do so. Eight World Cups, three European Championships, and there's been some good squads here as well that have yeah. got close, but never achieved it. We'll see. Chris and I will be there live in the stadium on Talk Sport for one of the Scotland matches. Every game of the tournament will be live on the network. Every game of Euro 2024 with us. Now then, Billy Gilmore for Scotland. Left-hand edge of the centre circle is Hanley. Hanley just inside Gibraltar territory. Scotland have probably had 85-90% of the ball so far. Still nil-nil inside the ninth minute. Robertson tucks the ball infield to Gilmore. Back out wide to the near side of the field. Robertson hugging the touchline infield to Gilmore again. Once more, the exchange. Oh, a little one-two. Now Forrest trying to maraud infield from the left-hand side. He's blocked off. Gibraltar have got everybody in red back behind the ball as you'd expect ball up the middle by Porteous will reach Shankland on the edge of the D but he can't find a teammate and Gibraltar scramble it away up towards the halfway line now McGinn picks up possession feeds Christie on the edge of the box and shuffling infield on the left footed effort is palmed away by the goalkeeper rasping drive good stop by Hankins Scotland have their third corner already yeah much better doesn't it you know you, you see 85% possession in Scotland's favour but without really testing Hankins that's what Ryan Christie can do he scores important goals big player at the right moment in time but you've got to take the opportunity when it presents itself to get the shot away let it fly ask him a few questions both ends of the stadium are empty as Robertson whips in the corner headed down and just over the top it was Hanley who got his head to it flying in on the edge of the six yard box nodded it down into the turf and maybe got too much power on that he should score Grant Hanley but it's spat up off the turf and over the bar and it's still nil-nil somehow well it's a massive opportunity and yeah it should be in the back of the net he heads it down you see that's what you, you do you, you, you know it's, it's what, what when, it, when it presents itself he knows the ball's coming just takes his eye off at the last minute and gets too much of a purchase on it and it actually bounces down and over the crossbar there but that should be in the back of the net massive opportunity very close to just a third Scotland goal Grant Handley and there's a real possibility in that first game of the Euros in Munich that that will be where Hanley achieves the the famous half century of caps what a memorable way to do so potentially Chris yeah well he's, you know I think uh, it's all to, to play for isn't it competition for, for places you know I think for me Grant Hanley is, is, should start you know I think aggressive quick defensively sound can be a little bit aggressive which is what you need as well but a fantastic leader that's uh, on the pitch and off Joe It'll be fascinating to see whether Steve Clark reverts back to a defensive three for the opening game. Anthony Ralston is wearing number two on the subs bench today. I don't know whether there's anything in that possibly. Will he potentially start the opening game at right wing back if Scotland play with that uh, central defensive three? We'll see. And there's so much to be talked about between now and then as Gilmore floats a high ball downfield, headed away by Lopez at the heart of the Gibraltar back line and hooked over his shoulder and away from danger by Brito for Gibraltar. Scotland quickly win it back and there was a foul on the halfway line and Scotland have possession again. Now they're attacking down the near side, the left. Little ball in field to Andy Robertson and Robertson is down by the dead ball line. He pulls it back and it's, oh! Somehow it's gone wide by Forrest. I thought it had hit the back of the net and some of the Scotland fans thought so too. Point blank range, nobody anywhere near him. Well, Scotland should be 2-0 up at least somehow. 
Forrest has hit the side netting, Chris. Yeah, I've got to say it's excellent play. Shank London, uh, Robertson down this left-hand side. Andy Robertson does everything right. The weight of the pass, cuts it back, gets his head up, finds Forrest, and he just leaves that kind of lazy right foot. And it should be in the, the, the near top uh, left-hand corner. And you can see by the player's reaction that he knows that he should, uh, should, uh, should have done better there. And somehow, Gibraltar have survived in the opening minutes without conceding, opening 12 minutes on TalkSport 2. And Gibraltar, who in that run of 12 defeats in a row coming into today, have not scored, but have conceded 48 times. And Scotland, the way the play is going, inevitably will score at some stage, but I suppose that's what warm-up matches are about to some extent, ironing out mistakes. And James Forrest, of course, we haven't seen in a Scotland shirt for about three years now Chris yeah and I think uh, he's thought very highly of by, by the group as well as the, the manager who he, he kind of he spoke in the individual he kind of singled him out didn't he speaking about his professionalism you know when things aren't going well sometimes you just got to get the head down and, and keep kind of plodding on showing exactly what you're, you're all about but he's in fantastic form at the minute so hopefully he can bring that for the, for the national side here is Forrest about 10 yards in field left of centre as we look at it back to the halfway line on the near side and Hanley, now Porteous of Watford, wide to the far side, the right wing position where Ross McCrory is standing. Little one two between him and Ryan Christie, and back to the halfway line, Scotland go. It'll be a quiet afternoon, it looks like, for Xander Clark in the Scotland goal, to say the very least. Now here's Robertson, the captain, in left wing position, in field to Shankland. Nice touch by Shankland, by the way, to set up Robertson on the underlap and as we said Forrest should have scored from the pullback yeah he has a few he's had a few nice moments already just bringing other players in wait a pass it's so so important for the team you know that, that the ball sticks and allows you to, Scotland to get up the pitch when they're playing against better opposition at the minute he's still got a job to do I'd like him to kind of stay away I know he's one of those players that wants to get involved too much but allow the likes of Christie well Gibraltar have lost out to Shanklin that he curls the ball wide from just inside the penalty area every time Gibraltar get on the ball, Scotland are surrounding them, pressing hard, firm and fair, and they won the ball back on the edge of the penalty area, and Shanklin spinning on the turn, easily eluded, and Louis Annesley, the number five, but couldn't find the bottom corner. Well, I think that's been the consistent factor with the Scotland side, that's how impressive they've been without the ball. You know, I think they the, the go and press, not in ones and twos, but as a group with that identity and that transition when they get the ball then all of a sudden it's that possession game they're probing and they're, they're getting in behind that defensive line and then creating chances i just like them to be a little bit more clinical big opportunities already in this game you know but they've got to just keep probing doing the right things but Shanklin has, 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 has had a very good start so far 24 goals again in the Scottish Premiership for Lawrence Shanklin in the season just gone the Scottish top flight top scorer and that's put him in real contention, who knows, for the opening game against Germany on the 14th of June, live with us in the stadium on Talk Sport. You think Shea Adams will get that central striker's role, most likely, but we'll see. It's one of the dilemmas that Steve Clark has to look at, including, as he said in the build-up, potentially bringing in a replacement for the injured Lyndon Dykes. Yeah, I think it's something that he has to look at. You know, I think Lyndon Dykes brought something different. I think even if Lyndon Dykes was, was was fit, I think Che Adams is the one that's going to start. You know, but I think this is an opportunity for Shanklin to again showcase the qualities that that he has shown, and he's going to he's going to be in the right moment, the right place, at the right time to score important goals for sure. Here he is on the edge of the area. Everybody back to Gibraltar again. A sea of red shirts in front of Andy Robertson as he feeds Forrest on the corner of the 18-yard box. Back to Robertson via deflection, deep ball to McCrory coming into the far post. But the man who's making his Scotland debut today, Ross McCrory of Bristol City, couldn't keep the ball in play, and he's turned it behind for a goal kick just under 16 minutes gone and it's still Gibraltar nil Scotland nil as the Tartan army watch on here on the Algarve and it's a it's a nice warm weather trip for them Chris isn't it yeah it is you know I think you, <laughs> you have to enjoy it the setting's perfect oh Scotland have won it back inside the penalty area McLean to cut it back across blocked by Bernardo Lopez comes back to McLean plenty of time to loft it high to the back post and Scotland wasteful again when it comes to the finish this time Christie thunders the left-footed volley over the top now I'm looking at that you know I'm, uh, it's, it's another big big opportunity I think Kenny McLean does everything right finds Ryan Christie he's watching it all the way 
And I just don't understand why he just doesn't come round that with the laces and hits it into the ground because he's got time to do so. He's tried to just kind of place it. He's found himself under the ball and doesn't even get nowhere near the target. But it's another massive opportunity, Joe. With better finishing, Scotland could be three or four up already. But again, it is a much changed side. Seven changes from the team beaten by Northern Ireland and a change of setup as well. Yeah, well, you say that, Joe, but this is a, a chance for these players to showcase and say, look, look, yeah. Gaffer, look, this is, I want to start, I want to start on, on the 14th of June. You know, if they go out and Shatley gets a hat trick today, really puts pressure on uh, on Steve Clark to, to start that, that, that first game. So, you know, this is an opportunity for McCrory to go on the end of things and create for others. I think Steve Clark will know what team he wants to start, but surely you've got to make him a question that with your performance Forrest goes on the outside of the defender Jolly tries to whip it a left footed cross last touch via a double deflection is off the Celtic man and it's a goal kick to Gibraltar away to our left hand side Chris Sewellamo former Scotland striker will be our Scotland co-commentator at the Euros Chris well I felt that Scotland against Northern Ireland when they, they just put everyone behind the ball and, yeah. and Scotland, they struggled, even though they had a lot of the ball, they never really created too many big chances, and then they're playing against a team that's basically all about counter-attack football that had that one chance, uh, and got a little bit fortunate with it, I have to say, but still put us under a little bit of pressure, so when you're looking at a Gibraltar side, you know what they're going to do you have to find ways now already you've said, it could be 3-0 4-0 with opportunities created, and that's that's the small margins you have to be clinical. You have to get that first goal. The first goal in a game like this is always the most difficult to get. Once you get it, then Gibraltar will have to take opportunities and take necessary risks to try and do something and create in the game. And that's when you capitalise on it. And Gibraltar have given it away yet again. And there's a foul by TJ Debar midway inside his own half the field. And Scotland have a free kick. Debar, who used to play for Wickham Wanderers and left the club at the end of the season. So there are a couple of Gibraltar players with some experience of English football. James Scanlon, just 17 years of age, has just signed a pro deal at Manchester United. But as we expect, they've really been chasing Scotland's shadows in the opening 19 minutes. Credit to them, though, in that it is still nil-nil, albeit a bit of good fortune for Gibraltar about some of them. Free kick Scotland, then, dead centre. Taken square by McGinn to Robertson to ping the ball towards the back post and Hanley was there lurking. It's headed behind by Jace Oliveira and Scotland have won at corner number four, nil nil. Yeah, Hanley's going to be the target for all uh, all set players, isn't he? Yep. Now he just goes and wins those aerial duels, so aggressive in the air. Uh, but like you say, you have to capitalise on it. I mean, this is where you'd expect the likes of McCrory and Robertson to create those little overloads in the wide areas with the likes of Christie and Forrest. You know, Billy Gilmore will probably sit more so in front of Porteous and Hanley and, and protect and allow the others to go and play. The corner has been taken short into the defeat of Ryan Christie, who goes all the way back to that far side, the right. And Gilmore in possession. Scotland have still got the ball now with Forrest, but he's had to go back to the halfway line where Robertson was standing. A square pass to McGinn, McGinn to hoist one in high, left to right, swinging away from goal, spun off the head of Christie, and Scotland's corner ultimately comes to nothing in the end. They have got it back out wide though to Christie again. Right wing position coming infield on his left foot. Square to Hanley, Hanley is about 40 yards out. Robertson whips the ball, left to right to the far side of the field, and Christie having to backpedal, Kenny McLean can't keep it in. And that's a Gibraltar throw in their left back position it is an interesting setup isn't it Chris because when we look at the group games and Germany in particular you'd have to think it's not quite going to be the reverse in terms of the pattern of play but there aren't going to be many matches you'd have thought in the group stage where the Scots are necessarily going to be dominating possession for long periods yeah but they have shown uh, especially in the, in the qualification group that against Spain you yeah. know and even Norway uh, out in Norway definitely that the they, they can still have success without having more of the ball and I think it, without the ball they're probably even more impressive because they understand the responsibility positions that they've got to take up how they press as a unit together as well I think this is when they've got to capitalise when they're in games and you're saying that against the Netherlands for the first hour they had more of the ball so I think right. they will go and try and be competitive and then try and get a foothold against the Germany I, I think it'd be the wrong setup to go and concede possession straight away and try and play counter-attack football from the get-go that's I don't think they'll do that I think they'll go and try and fight for the right to get on the ball and play they've, they've got technical players that can uh, can play the ball around and, and keep possession they're certainly enjoying lots of possession 
And so far this afternoon, warm afternoon on the outcome. Gibraltar nil Scotland nil it remains. In the 22nd minute, scampering in third from the left is Forrest, 10 yards to the edge of the penalty area. Look for Shankland, it was blocked off by Anasleen. Credit to Gibraltar who hold firm again, but the long ball upfield towards the number nine, El Hamidi, comes to nothing. And Scotland have it back with Andy Robertson, midway inside the Gibraltar half. McLean trying to keep the ball moving quickly. Gilmore, a couple of touches, tries to thread the ball through the middle towards Christie, made a run infield from the right-hand side, but he can't beat the sea of red shirts in front of him, and in the end, the tackle comes in from Scanlon, the Gibraltar midfielder, and it's a Gibraltar throw via the deflection of Gilmore in their left-back spot, a quarter of the game gone and still goalless. Well, Joe, you, you nailed it there, it's so important that that Scotland have to move the ball quickly. You know, James Forrest has been expansive, hugging the, 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 the line, but then when he comes in, when that pass is on, because Shankland is presenting himself every time, he has to give it. As soon as he takes that extra touch, then the defenders came in and filled that, that, that gap, that, that pass is gone. So he has to release it and move the ball very, very quickly, especially when you're playing against a low block. Everyone's coming back. You know, how are you going to break it down? If you, if you move it passive, you're, you're not troubling them. So you have to, quick passing, can you play those intricate passes uh, between the lines? And that really causes Gibraltar a lot of uh, problems. Well, because it's very warm today, the referee has called a halt to play halfway through the first half, and there's a chance for both sets of players to come across the near side, take on a few instructions, but most importantly, uh, get some water into their systems as well. Lots of Scotland fans here today, lots of them in the uh, dark blue regular home shirts for Scotland. and. The blue and white salt tyres are flying up into the sky in the crowd as well. And just to let you know that we do have another live commentary in the build-up to a Euro 2024 to come this evening over on Talk Sport. England against Bosnia and Herzegovina in that friendly at St James's Park at 7.45 tomorrow night uh, with England women. The Lioness is away in France in a European qualifier here on Talk Sport 2. Then Friday evening, England against Iceland live on Talk Sport. We'll keep you up to date with everything that happens uh, at Hampton between Scotland and Finland. And then Euro 2024 underway, Friday the 14th of June. Chris and I will be there for the opening game in Munich. We can't wait. It'll be live on Talk Sport and we will bring you all the action as it happens. Can't wait for the start of the tournament and make sure you download our app. That way you can swipe between both stations at your leisure. So the uh, cooling drink, the drinks break is over. A couple of smiles between Grant Handley and the referee. Chris and I will talk I am going to ask you at the end of the game, Chris, what your starting eleven for the 14th of June would be. But let's forget about that for now. Just at the first 24 minutes, how useful an exercise has this been for Steve Clark? Yeah, I think it's I think it's very important. You know, I think okay, dominating the ball, getting the minutes in the legs. Yeah, I'd like to see a couple of goals so far with the chances created. But like you say, I think it's uh, I think the goal will come and then the floodgates will hopefully open. But what I'm seeing at the minute, you know, I think that there has to be understanding and relationships all over the pitch. For me, at the water boot there, I'm expecting Shankland to come to the likes of Forrest and, and Christie and say, look, I'm always going to present myself. They should know that anyway. It's like for me, when I played, my, my wing backs, my full backs knew exactly what I was doing because they knew the kind of service that I would want to go and get myself in the game and go and win my, my headers and go and present myself and, and, and link up with the, the players around me. Good ball by Forrest into the Vita McGinn, back to Forrest on the edge of the penalty area. Lovely pass to Christie, quick feed on the edge of the six-sharp box, nearly evaded the four or five red Gibraltar shirts around him. In the end, Gibraltar just about scramble it clear, and there's a foul by uh, Porteous just inside Gibraltar territory on the on the bar. And the home team have a free kick. It's Talk Sport 2, and it's still Gibraltar nil, Scotland nil, and you can hear Flower of Scotland and the and the backpipes here inside the stadium. So I think it's a very soft free kick that. I don't think it's a free kick at all. Ryan Portis, he, that's what he brings, that physicality. You know, always in his front foot, always trying to put the, 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 the attacker under a little bit of pressure. Gibraltar have got the ball now midway inside the Scotland half. El Hamidi's held it up well and has poked the ball wide to the near side. The captain, Liam Walker. And Gibraltar have put together three, four, five passes, which is easily the most that they've managed over the course of the game so far. Annesley for them on the halfway line, back to the number four Jack Sargent who plays for the Lincoln Red Imps who are the most successful domestic side in Gibraltar football. Hoisted downfield by Olivero, high to the 
halfway line. A slightly miscued header by Ross McCrory and El Hamidi has laid it back to Brito. Midway inside the Scotland half, wide to Dubar. There could be a chance on for Gibraltar here. Now El Hamidi, corner of the 18-yard box. I don't think Xander Clark has had any sort of touch of the ball in the first 26 and a half minutes yet as Gibraltar see their attack come to an end. Brito's been robbed of possession and maybe Scotland can count it. Christie tears over the halfway line. He's got McCrory on the overlap to his immediate right. McCrory right on edge of the penalty area. Nothing on the pullback towards Shankland and it's steered away by Bernardo Lopez. Well, that just shows you the, the, the threat. You know, when Gibraltar come up, they got a couple of pass, uh, patches of play in there. Look, looked decent, but then it showed you the quality of Scotland from back to front as well. Got into that attacking area. McCrory done everything right. Broke his neck to get round the outside of Christie. Has to be end product, though. Forrest in field from the left. He's found Gilmore on the edge of the penalty area. Good tackle by Sergeant of Gibraltar. Had to stretch and time that perfectly just inside the 18-yard box. It was a robust challenge, but a fair one. But he's given it away to Forrest. 25 yards out. Forrest high over the top right footed. Still nil nil. Yeah, you know, it's a big opportunity again. Great defending from uh, from Sergeant there. Billy Gilmer just venturing a little bit forward. McLean was just sitting, and that's what they've got to do. They've got to shield that role because Billy Gilmer as well. He picks up very intelligent positions. Great first touch from Gilmer, but like you say, a good defensive challenge here from, from the, the Gibraltar uh, centre back. Well, Steve Clark and, and Liam Cooper, who did some of the media rounds on the bench for Scotland today, speaking in the build-up, did say, rightly so, you've got to respect everybody in international football and you've got to take every test at face value. And in fairness to Gibraltar, they, with a little bit of good fortune, have held out and it's still nil-nil after 28 minutes. And in some senses, I think, that makes it a more interesting test for Scotland, slightly more interesting anyway than if they had gone. A two or three up inside the opening ten, which easily could have been the case. Forward by Bernardo Lopez for Gibraltar, thumping it high downfield. Ross McCrory is there with a neat clearing header. And Scotland are back on the ball. Neat reverse ball by Christie down the middle to uh, Gilmore. Midway inside Gibraltar territory. Nice little touch by Christie again, the Bournemouth man. Out to the right-hand side. And McCrory, who had to scramble to keep it in play and then was challenged by Ethan Brito. When they don't have the ball, Gibraltar here... It's basically everybody back behind the ball, uh, bar the centre forward, the bar. I think in those situations, though, when McCrory's put in, I think he should take Brito on. I think go when it's 1v1, you know, show him exactly what you're about, energy, make sure he knows he's in the game, you're asking that question, be direct every opportunity. When it's blatantly on to, to come back and put uh, uh, like crosses into the box, then yeah, do so, but don't turn back all the time. 65% of the ball. For Scotland so far, we're in the 30th minute, we yet to see the opening goal of the game. McLean, really good to see him in a Scotland shirt and fighting fit. So unlucky to miss uh, the Euros in 2021, as it was, of course, the delayed Euros. McGinn deep past the far post, headed across goal by McCrory and Miles over the top. He should have brought it down in his chest. Surely there, Chris. Well, we heard everyone else say, time, <laughs> now chest. And you're thinking that he's that he's, that he's going to do it, but he's just trying to put it back in. Be selfish. Be, want to be the main man. Take it on your chest. You're going to have enough time. You're going to get an opportunity that you're going to get a connection towards goal. And that's where you've got to be selfish sometimes. You know, take it on your chest, put the ball in the back of it and say, you know what, Gaffer, I, I want to start for you on the 14. Was that classic? right back in the striker's area yeah, basically exactly that but this is this is the moment we, we, we spoke about it before the game it's the small margins you've got to make the difference you've got to be the difference and that's an opportunity there for McCrory he's had a couple of opportunities to put crosses in and link up and he's just fallen short a little bit at the minute but you know we, we know he's got the quality there and Che Adams and Scott McKenna warming up for Scotland on the near side just to the left of the halfway line as we look at it that's a sparsely populated Estadio do Algarve which is the temporary home of Gibraltar while their uh, regular stadium undergoes a bit of renovation. Robertson for Scotland. Wide to the near side with the angled ball to find Forrest. Hugging the left-hand touchline. He's one-on-one -on -one with the defender, Jolly. Robertson with the other lapping run. Chips it back across, headed wide again. This time by McLean. Having to stretch a little bit because the ball was whipped in by Robertson. Maybe not quite onto the head of McLean as much as he would have wanted. Had to stretch his neck muscles slightly, but... Again, it's well wide of target when maybe he should have done better, nil-nil. No, 100% should have done better. I think Andy Robertson's got every right to be saying, well, what else 
what else do you want from me? He's put it right on the money on a couple of occasions, and you can always tell from the player who's missed the opportunity by their, their body language, by their reaction, that they know that he never had to work too hard to kind of get his head around that, just to steer it on, on target. You know, he's got a lot of the goal to aim for there. He should be hitting the target there and should be doing better. Well, he's very vocal, the Gibraltar head coach, uh, the Uruguayan Julio Cesar Ribas. And meanwhile, uh, Steve Clark has looked relatively unmoved. He's been watching um, a lot of the game. Steve Clark uh, from a seated position uh, in this main stand. The ball is on the far side to Scotland right. And Christie, all left foot, whipping it in towards the near post, blocked off by the first man, Brito. And Chris was just um, he reminded me before the game, not got a great record, the Gibraltar head coach, not got a great record in general, Gibraltar, since they became a FIFA-affiliated nation. But it's no great surprise. It's a land of just 32,000 people. Here comes Scotland, nil-nil. Christie, great reverse ball, and Kenny McLean attacked it, couldn't get there. He, I thought he might look to the referee because there was quite a... A physical challenge on McLean from Ethan Jolly. They both went for it 50-50. Referee didn't think about awarding a penalty. Great ball in there by Christie from the corner of the box. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. I think Jolly's seen the danger as McLean's advanced in there. And I've, I think the contact came after the ball's already passed uh, McLean. So understandably, it's not, it's not given. Albeit, you, you definitely try and put the referee under a little bit of pressure and, and ask, ask him the question there. But uh, no, I think it was good defending there from Jolly. Nil-nil, it remains. 33 minutes, the clearance from the Gibraltar goalkeeper Hankins, who's actually only had one save to make, as Scotland have been wasteful, really, with the opportunities that they've had. It's been poked forward to Shackland in the area, hit it first time right-footed, it bobbled up in front of him, and the defender uh, was coming across as well, but it is miles over the top. Yeah, a little bit scrappy, wasn't it? Just poked, poked it uh, in, into his path there, Ryan Christie, and I understand why he wants to take the shot. Probably got too much of a connection rather than coming over it and hitting the ball into the ground but with the goals that he scored for Hearts this season I'm expecting him to at least work uh, Hankins in the Gibraltar goal virtually everybody's warming up for Scotland now it will be interesting to see the changes that Steve Clark makes over the course of the game whether there'll be any at half time whether we see the changes in shape possibly too depending on the personnel it, it would surprise me if it wasn't the case Joe you know not in Kate not unless he he sees something that he just wants to have another look at I think there'd be a, a complete change at half time because I think there's players definitely on the bench that need to get minutes in the legs as well you know so I think it's important uh, that, it, that everyone gets a, a fair share and, and the same again on, on uh, against Finland as well and John Carver the assistant is standing with his arms folded on the edge of the stop, Scotland technical area the borders on the opposite side of the field, the far side, the right, as Scotland come infield now to Robertson in a central position, almost inverted Robertson, the fullback coming infield, and then a heavy touch by McCrory with his pass from the right, back infield to Gilmore. Wide goes Gilmore to McCrory again in the sunshine, Gibraltar nil, Scotland nil, little ball by Christie trying to flick it into the feet of McCrory, who'd made an underlapping run, but Gibraltar defend that. Relatively straightforwardly, had enough men back behind the ball, and now the pass is out of play via a deflection so Scotland have a throw Christie back to Gilmore again Christie's level the edge of the 18 yard box he's got time to dart infield left footed square pass to the feet of Robertson again Robertson whips in an early ball high to the back post headed up into the air by Jolly good defending from the Gibraltar man at the expense of a Scotland corner their fifth of this game nil nil yeah it's an excellent little ball isn't it you know Forrest is trying to get him behind I've got to see I think uh, Jolly defended it well uh, he had to make some sort of contact or Forrest was going to get that ball down in the 18-yard box and then he's, he can do what he needs to do. But uh, yeah, better play from Scotland there. Robertson out swinging left-footed delivery. Hanley's there! Great save! Shackland on the rebound, also denied. Somehow, Gibraltar survived. It was a super stop from the goalkeeper, Jalen Hankins. And then Shankland saw his effort turned off the line, I think, by the defender, Bernardo Lopez. Scotland still on the attack, hoisted long by Robertson. Hanley's there again. This time he can't get his head on it. 
and TJ Debar will try and dribble the ball away for Gibraltar. That's as close as Scotland have come. And in fairness to Gibraltar, you've got to give them great credit. No, excellent save, wasn't it, from Hankins, from the Hanley header. You know, he did everything right, he hit the target. And then Lopez is reacting the exact same as Shankland. You know, he's, he's reaching for it, he's stretching for it, Shankland. He's done everything right, he has hit the target. It's a great block by Lopez, isn't it? Great block, sees the danger, throws himself at it. Doesn't know a lot about it, but hits him on the back of the left calf there, Lopez. And it's Portis, Might have isn't been it? Portis who got the final touch, yeah. And so the two centre halves going close to giving Scotland the advantage. And a Grant Hadley could hardly have come closer in the space of a half of football to getting himself his third Scotland goal. Really good stop by the goalkeeper. Still, Gibraltar nil, Scotland nil on a different day. The Scots could have scored, scored plenty. There might be a a problem here though uh, for Scotland and James Forrest has gone down after a pretty firm challenge on him and you're thinking Chris there was a high foot on James Forrest it looked like Annesley was the man who made the challenge for Gibraltar in fact it was El Hamidi the striker yeah I'm looking at it now you know I think it has a genuine attempt for the ball but it's just when he's coming down uh, he, he just brings it right on the the tibia as well it's a sore one that you know you feel that one uh but again, uh, it was a genuine attempt for the ball. He's, just, he's raised the foot, showed the studs a little bit. With Talk Sport 2, England against Bosnia Herzegovina uh, on Talk Sport later. And then we'll bring you uh, the sports bar as ever. You can have your say, Scotland fans, on what you listen to and what you see today. And your thoughts ahead of Euro 2024. We'll bring you every game live of the entire tournament on the network. And McCrory infield, little strip of sunshine now on the far side, the right of the pitch. Gilmore, wide to the near side, the left, and McLean, lots of space to bring it down. Five yards from the corner of the area, that's a great ball in. Good header away by Bernardo Lopez, who's been excellent. And then it's spun off the head of Brito, and behind for a Scotland corner, and it does feel like... Gibraltar are really hanging on here somehow. Well, they're defending well, aren't they, Joe? It's a great header from Lopez. I've got to say that understanding between Kenny McLean. Uh, Andy Robertson is more central now. Kenny McLean's went out to left-hand side. James Forrest takes his man away. Cross comes in. Shanklin's in space, caught in between both centre-backs. It's a great defensive header from Lopez. Gilmore's corner. It'll be out swinging from the right from the Brighton man. And the referee has spotted something he doesn't like inside the penalty area. And he's pointing towards Annesley, the Gibraltar number five. Has he given a penalty here, the referee? I'll I don't take think it. he has. No. I think he's just in conversation with Annesley at the moment. No. Or has he given a penalty? Annesley holding on to Porteous. And there's a bit of confusion here as Annesley appeals. No, the corner's going to be retaken again. It should have been a penalty, Chris. We've got a replay in our commentary position, a little monitor that we can see that incident again on. It should have been a spot kick. Instead, Gilmore takes the corner again, headed away by Annesley, drops down to Christie on the edge of the box. It's headed away by Lopez. Gilmore steers it infield to Forrest, who now shoots. That's charged down by Debar. Scotland laying siege to the goal in by Christie McLean heads it down away from goal it'll be kept in on the dead ball line very close range by Shankland he tries to tease it back across this time Sargent's in the way for Gibraltar how have Scotland not scored I've got to say it's an excellent ball in from Christie McLean just finds himself you know he's in here but he's ahead of the ball Okay, it's great defending, you know, from uh, from Gibraltar again. I think the penalty wasn't given because I think he's blowing the whistle just before the ball's been taken. Yeah, and he's got to get involved again here, the referee. There are players from both sides getting well acquainted in and around the penalty spot. Again, honestly, a Gibraltar is appealing to the referee. Nil-nil, talk sport two, another Scotland corner. In by Gilmore to the near post. It evades uh, Shankland initially, but he's got time to loop it back in. Hanley sticks it wide, left-footed from inside the six-yard box. And Grant Hanley, the centre-half, could and probably should have had a first-half hat-trick. Well, he should have. I think that's the, 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 the more difficult opportunity there. I think Ryan Portians get, gets the flick, so he's reacting to it. He's just swinging the left foot, but he's he's unmarked. He's, uh, what, three yards from oh. goal. It is the most difficult opportunity because Portis does get a little... I think, sorry, it's McCrory that gets a little bit of a contact that just takes it away, and he's just kind of swinging at it and doesn't get that contact, but he should at least be working Hankins in the, the Gibraltar goal there. Another big opportunity, but the hardest of the three so far for Hanley. So close, but it still won't go in for Scotland. 
certainly chances created. He couldn't have asked for much more from a Scotland perspective, but they just can't find the back of the net. Well, this has been the story. You know, I think uh, in, in games where you're, you're, you're controlling or even when, when you're not having a lot of the ball, when that opportunity presents itself, you have to be clinical. And that's what they were. The first five games of the quality league, qualification group they were outstanding with chances created they were putting them in the back of the net and in, in, in controlling games and in managing games in the right way Joe so it is a bit of concern the five six opportunities created in this game tonight with have been completely in control it's still nil nil there's a foul on Dubar now free kick to Gibraltar but just shy of the halfway line and Gibraltar in fairness have made this a, a tough game in a sense for Scotland but I mean, as you say, Chris, when you when you look back at the opportunities that Scotland have had, and some of them have been golden chances, and they just need a, a little bit of refinement in the finishing, which maybe, which surely will come at some point as this game goes on. Long ball downfield for Gibraltar from the free kick. It's come to nothing, and Xander Clark. There's an ironic cheer from the Scotland fans, and Chris, you and I think. 42 minutes gone, that's his first touch. That is his first touch of the ball. <laughs> what 42 minutes in, you'll be you'll be delighted, won't he? You know, I think uh, he won't be wanting he won't be wanting a change at half time if that's what the manager's going to do. I'm not sure it'll be quite like that for Angus Gunn on the opening game of the finals, assuming Angus Gunn does start, which we well, he has I think to we start. Think he he has to start. He's been outstanding, hasn't he? But look, you never know. You never know. We'll be there to see if Scotland can get out of the group stages. I think his father joked that he's had more caps and he had uh, more clean sheets than his father <laughs> had caps, which is uh... <laughs> sort of Brian Gunn, of course, Angus. Scotland's number one. Robertson, left wing position, infield to Forrest. He's rolled away from the defender, hits a right footed shot, blocked by a Johnny who's stuck within the Gibraltar man. And maybe Gibraltar will survive until half time here with it remaining nil nil. TJ Dubar again has gone down, again he wins Gibraltar a free kick. Scotland fans a bit frustrated with Dubar and a bit frustrated with the referee now. I think Dubar done his job well there, kept possession of the ball, felt a little bit of pressure on the back from, from Robertson and as I'm looking at it now you know it's a soft one but it is a free kick the hips come together the foot and goes I think Robertson had a few words as well to the bar there but he's done everything what what you want from your striker well he is as I said earlier one of the few players in the Gibraltar side with any experience of football outside of Gibraltar itself header away by Hanley into touch and it's a Gibraltar throw only about five yards from the corner flag here. Gibraltar nil, Scotland nil. Talk Sport 2, Scotland will host at Finland in their last warm-up game on Friday. A week before the finals. Now then, here goes a Sargent to take the throw for Gibraltar. Will they try a long throw here, I wonder? They've got a couple of tall players in the lineup, the likes of Bernardo Lopez and Annesley. Long throw into the near post, it's towards Bernardo Lopez, stomping header clear by Hanley. It's come back out wide to Sargent, last minute of normal time at the end of the first half. Infield to the captain, and Walker, who plays it backwards to Jolly, and Jolly has to go all the way back to the halfway line, and Oliveira, he hoists it high downfield. Oh, and it nearly reached Sargent coming into the back post, but it was a very composed intervention by Andy Robertson to come across and cushion the header back to Xander Clark. Yeah, it was a great header. Was, wasn't a bad ball at all. Andy Robertson knew exactly where he was, where Xander Clark was. It was a fantastic defensive header. It's just They just need to move the ball a little bit quicker. Scotland win in possession. Good ball up the inside left channel by John McGinn. Shackland is after it. Barged over. Poor challenge by Jack Sargent. And I wonder whether... I say I wonder whether it will be booked. Perhaps the fact it's a friendly means that Sargent will get away without any further punishment it was a, an awful challenge to be honest yeah it should be a yellow card you know I think it's uh, I've got to say Shankland he's coming to feet he's, he's spinning in behind the quality that he's getting can be a little bit better but I think you know Sargent came through the back of them there unaware it can, yeah it can be a little bit dangerous as well I'm surprised the referee hasn't brought the yellow card out there two minutes of added time at the end of the first half Gibraltar nil Scotland nil free kick left wing position Five yards infield from the corner flag. Whipped in by Andy Robertson, left footed. McCrory goes up for it. I don't think he actually got the touch. I think it came off Jolly, the defender, and deflected into the gloves of the goalkeeper, Jalen Hankins, who has had a, a very creditable Gibraltar debut. And McCrory again in a wrestling match with Jolly, and they are not afraid to be physical, this Gibraltar team, and they might have a chance here. 
Great ball over the top and an opportunity for Brito to shoot. And it is an effort on target for Gibraltar. He was off balance in fairness, corner of the penalty area. And Xander Clark has had a, a very simple save to make, but a save nonetheless. Well, it was an excellent run from, from Brito, wasn't it? I think it was uh, Portis that was following them all the way, but he got the shot away. And he's a comfortable one for Xander Clark, but it just shows you, you know, I think when you're completely in control of the game on top, that defensive line is so, so important. You have to be aware of that angled ball. 50 seconds of the first half to go, stoppage time remaining. Robertson with the pink boots on, has angled it wide to Forrest. He's always shaping to cut infield onto his right side. Finds Gilmore, edge of the D, rasping effort, blocked by his own man Shanklin. I think it might have been going wide anyway. Scotland playing from right to left in the first half, all in white. They win it back through Kenny McLean to dink it in, left footed, headed away by Sargent for Gibraltar. A couple of lovely touches, lovely deft balls into the box from Kenny McLean so far today. And Scotland have just been miss uh, missing the finishing touch. And as the ball goes out of play for Gibraltar in the left back position, it does look like it is going to be nil nil at half time. Just a one effort on goal for the home team. It's been a, a good defensive effort from Gibraltar. And they'll be delighted. Scotland a little disappointed that their finishing hasn't been of sufficient quality. And that's why it is goalless at half time. Live on TalkSport 2 on the Algarve, Scotland have had numerous opportunities. Grant Handley could easily have had a hat-trick the centre-half. James Forrest should have scored at least once as well. Ryan Christie and Kenny McLean also guilty of missing good Scotland chances. Haven't seen much of Lawrence Shankland in front of goal. There was one effort from the edge of the box that he rather snatched at. Couldn't keep it down. Uh, Gibraltar nil, Scotland nil on a day, Chris Iwenema, where we know the result doesn't really matter but Scotland do need to be more efficient with their finishing than this. No, they do. You know, I think uh, being completely in control of the game, I don't think uh, Gibraltar have posed a threat, but they've got into some, some excellent positions, and that's where you, you know, at, at, at minimum, you, you, you're testing Hankins in, in the Gibraltar goal. Too many times the ball's going a little bit astray here, there. You know, you want to be hitting the target, get into that, that habit, good habits. You know, the, the play, the build-up's been excellent. The way to pass, the decision of pass has been spot on. It's it's just that contact. If it's Forrest for the for the for the near one, you know, even Portis, you know, I know he's done well, he got it on target, but again, just the contact, anticipating Grant Hanley, anticipating the little touch off McCrory, and you're getting you're testing the goalkeeper out. There has been great opportunities to put the ball in the back of the net. And that is a concern. But you know what? If they weren't getting opportunities, that'd be even more worrying. So it's just about I'd be very surprised if it's not a completely new team for the second half. But you have to uh, move the ball, be more efficient, uh, move the ball a little bit quicker, but get into the right areas uh, in that attacking thought. Well, look, I want to ask you, Chris, you and I have talked about this sort of thing loads of times before. You're a front man. How frustrating will it be for Lauren Shanklin that he, that he, there was that one opportunity that he had with the ball at his feet facing his facing the goal. He was under pressure from the defender. He couldn't keep the shot down. How frustrating is that for him, that yeah, first half? I understand why it will be frustrating because you, you have to be a little bit selfless as well. You know, you're, you're coming, you're dragging players out of position for the likes of Kenny McLean and Forrest and Christie to get into those positions. But that's probably why he did snatch at that opportunity. You know, but... <laughs> That, that's what he's going to be judged on is scoring goals for, for his national side so he has, sometimes he has to just stay away from play allow Scotland allow the likes of Christie John McGinn and uh, Forrest to get into those positions and then be in the right place be the the, 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 the player that's stretching the pitch for, for Scotland and Chris Iwellamo will be our Scotland commentator across the Euros really looking forward to being at the finals with Chris for Scotland's group matches starting on Friday the 14th of June for Germany against Scotland live in Munich the opening game of the tournament cannot wait for that um, lots still to come today second half commentary here from the Algarve Gibraltar nil Scotland nil is a half time score and we'll look ahead to England against Bosnia and Herzegovina that's live on Talk Sport later this evening 17 attempts on goal in the first half for Scotland just two of those on target that's probably the story of the game so far it's Gibraltar nil Scotland nil you are listening to Talk Sport 2 the mud, the sweat, and the cheers. What a hit! International Friendly, live on TalkSport 2. 
Get an expert guide to all the latest speculations, signings and spending sprees with Simon Jordan's Football Business Roundup on TalkSport with Tesco Mobile for Business. From the latest deals worth knowing to where the big money transfers are going, get the inside track in one all-covering football finance feature. Simon Jordan's Football Business Roundup on TalkSport with Tesco Mobile for Business. Join Tesco Mobile and get business phone bills for up to 40% less than the big mobile networks. Tesco Mobile. Every little helps. For applicable terms and verification, see tescomobile.com slash business. For two days only, read The Times and Sunday Times for free. This weekend, we're throwing the doors open so everyone can enjoy our world-class journalism on thetimes.com. Get ready for Euro 2024 with our unrivaled coverage. Don't miss the definitive story of Harry Kane's season with Bayern Munich and Martin Samuel's guide to the tournament. For all this and more, visit thetimes.com to enjoy your free access this weekend in association with Waitrose. When it comes to outdoor jobs, Toolstation knows the grind never stops. You're out there moving mountains, the keeper of gardens, the setter of standards. There's no garden too great, no fence too fierce. When others fall flat, you keep digging deep. And with thousands of weekly price checks on trade quality products, you can keep nailing the job at hand. Tool Station for a job done right. Yeah, let's get the business. Make a good job an epic job with Denman's. With over 30,000 electrical products and site supplies, Denman's has everything you need, including epic trade deals. Like the Karcher K2 Compact Home Pressure Washer for just £80 plus 20% VAT. Visit one of our 74 branches or order online at denmans.co.uk. Subject to availability, conditions apply. It's important to look after your eyes. That's why the new advanced eye test at Vision Express not only tests your eyesight, but your eye health too. It now includes a scan to help detect eye conditions early, a UV protection assessment, dry eye assessment and personalised advice, so you can step out feeling confident. Vision Express. Express your vision. TNCs apply. Upgrade your free NHS PRSI medical card eye test for a nominal fee. From mouth-watering mangoes to punchy pineapples. The only thing sweeter than little super fresh fruit is winning it for free. Win with every spin with your little plus app and get a free fruit coupon for your next purchase. Join millions of customers and put our fresh to the test today. Download Little Plus and save like a hero. GB only. Subject to availability. Ends 12th of June. Terms apply. See little.co.uk forward slash spin. Hard-hitting football coverage. Friday night. International friendly. Live on Talk Sport. And he scores! England versus Iceland. Coverage from 7. Kickoff 8pm. Friday night on Talk Sport. Fight Night Extra on TalkSport 2. Tuesday evening from 5. Get weighed in for a massive night of big boxing drama. I'm just ready to go to war. Explosive insight. I'm the generation fighter. I actually feel sorry for all these guys. Hard-hitting boxing discussion. Fantastic boxer. Get in the ring and go the distance. She's got movements that look like Mayweather at times. Fight Night Extra. Tuesday evening from 5 on TalkSport 2. On DAB Plus, online, by the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. Oh, what a majestic strike! International friendly, live. On TalkSport 2. It is the penultimate step on the journey to Germany for the Scots. Now McGinn picks up possession, feeds Christie on the edge of the box, and shuffling infield on the left foot in effort, is palmed away by the goalkeeper. Rasping drive as Robertson whips in the corner, headed down and just over the top. It was Handy who got his head to it, flying in on the edge of the six-yard box. And gets too much of a purchase on it. And it actually benches down and over the crossbar there, but that should be in the back of the net. Massive opportunity. Robertson is down by the dead ball line. He pulls it back and it's off. Oh, somehow it's gone wide by Forrest. Debates at Shankland initially, but he's got time to loop it back in. Handley sticks it wide, left footed from inside the six-yard box. And Grant Handley, the centre half, could and probably should have had a first half hat trick. Gibraltar nil, Scotland nil. Your goal is at half time on the Algarve. Second half commentary to come on Talk Sport 2 uh, later on this evening, live on Talk Sport from 7.45. 
England host Bosnia and Herzegovina in an international friendly as they prepare for the Euros getting underway in just 11 days time. And Alexander Arnold swinging one, two deep for Doug Grealish and it's put in and England lead. Oli Watkins sliding into the far post, he's there to score. We're trying to embed some principles this week in what we've talked about and what we've worked on. I think England have to attack because particularly looking at some of the defending. Here is Tony! Sends the people the wrong way. The first international goal of Ivan Tony's career. There are lots of different objectives. Some individuals we want to see. Back to Palmer. Oh, oh shoot. my! What a goal! It's fantastic! It's Cole Palmer! I think Gareth has got to find a way. It looks like if we get that back four right, in front of the goalkeeper, we got a great chance of winning. To set of Jekyll, it's 1 0 to Bosnia Herzegovina. Playing at St James's Park, which is going to be a brilliant atmosphere, and we love taking the team on the road. Hey, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. They're going to Germany. Well, we will see. And every game for England will be live across Talk Sport at Euro 2024. The final squad announcement is looming for Gareth Southgate. And the England boss has been speaking with our England correspondent, Faker Others, ahead of tonight's game. Gareth, we get closer and closer. How has everybody trained? How is everyone? And a quick question, because you've just told us that Kieran Trippier is going to be captain um, tomorrow night. What does that mean for Harry Kane? How How is he as well? Because we've obviously not seen him since he's had that back injury. Everybody has trained well. Really pleased with that. Um, Harry has trained all week, um, but we feel... Um, we don't need him to start the game tomorrow so um, but he he can be involved in the game in terms of the wider squad for tomorrow's game no Shaw no Maguire no Gordon no Saka no Stones some of those just need a little bit more training time some are still uh, recovering from injury so but all are progressing well are you at that point? I mean, obviously, we've got 26, which helps matters, and you've taken injured players um, to tournaments before, but particularly with Harry Maguire and Luke Shaw being such key parts. And the last time we sat down, you said that Luke was a wild card to, to be picked. How likely is it that he's going to be coming out? Yeah, he, he's progressing very well, I have to say. So um, I think I said last week that, you know, until we had the players in front of us working with us, there were, there was a lot of... Um, information that we didn't have so uh, we're, we're pleased with how he's progressing there's still a bit to do before he can get on the pitch in a game situation but uh, really pleased with the work he's doing with our physical performance team and our medics uh, so yeah he, he's he's in with a good chance okay so would it be worth the risk i mean that's a really stupid question to ask in a way because of course he's worth the risk but when you've got 26 spots mm. if He's not going to be ready for you know the opening couple of games, but could be ready further down the line. That's worth a risk, isn't it? That's that's the thing we have to work out because, of course, if he's not ready for the first couple of games, there's a chance he could break down further down the line. So um, you've got to make sure you've got enough cover in that situation as well. Um, so there is a bit of a numbers game for us to play over the next few days. OK, how many do we need in each position? Um, we've got to cover ourselves clearly he's a specialist left back that's you know an incredibly high level player as well so you're more likely to take a chance on a, a player that's been a regular starter that we think can really add to the starting 11 um, but there are knock on in, there's an impact to all of those decisions and that's why we've got to look at the full picture not just each individual and it does feel as if that full picture isn't quite coming to the fore particularly in defense as well john stone's not going to play uh, tomorrow night we know harry Maguire uh, isn't as well how serious is harry's injury by the way i haven't asked you that yet well again he's progressing well um not sh i mean he won't be involved tomorrow uh, unlikely i would say for next uh, Friday but um, yeah each couple of days that's passes you've we've got a little bit more information on how how they're progressing and how likely that is and the likely the return date so um, it, yeah John's is a little bit more that in the end he played the cup final so for us that was a positive we don't feel he needs to start the game tomorrow um, but we would be looking at him to playing on Friday and Gareth Southgate, the England boss there, England against Bosnia and Herzegovina at St James's Park. It is live tonight. 
on Talk Sport. Tomorrow evening we're with the Lionesses away at France in a crucial Euros qualifier. Talk Sport 2 for that. And Friday night, England Iceland did a friendly as England conclude their warm up campaign. We'll keep you up to date with how Scotland get on at home to Finland. And then Euro 2024 starts Friday night, the 14th of June. And Chris and I will be there live in Munich for Germany against Scotland. It's Gibraltar nil Scotland in in our live commentary this afternoon on Talk Sport 2. Scotland have done everything but score 17 attempts on goal. Just two of those on target. Now both sets of players are now out on the field of play ahead of the second half. I think we're going to see a few changes by the look of it, Chris Iwellamo. Not exactly sure who is coming on for who as yet, but there's at least one Scotland change by the looks of things as we glance down towards the halfway line below us and it's Grant Hanley who has come off and Liam Cooper is on so that's a, a straight swap Hanley who on another day might have scored a hat-trick is hauled off at half time yeah he'll be disappointed won't he you know I think uh, I think they'll have an idea before the game what the changes are going to be who needs the minutes and yeah. Grant Hanley I think uh, with the opportunities that, that he had he'll be disappointed he's not come off with at least a brace anyway well interestingly that's the only Scotland change I'm sure there'll be plenty more to come and as you say Chris they'll have planned them before the game won't they the, the, yeah, I the think staff so. and players you'd have thought I'd have thought I'd have, I'd have thought there'd be maybe more changes at half time but maybe he wants to have a little look uh, he needs a little bit more from the from the players that what he's seen so far so he's, he's maybe the hour mark he's given them to kind of showcase what they're about going get that goal because they, they were very dominant without really troubling Hankins in the Gibraltar goal and so Scotland get the second half off and underway here Live on Talk Sport 2, Scotland all in white with blue trim playing from left to right. And Gibraltar in red with white trim playing from right to left. Scotland have Xander Clark in goal. And McCrory, Porteous, now Cooper and Robertson making up the back four. Gilmore and McLean holding Christy, McGinn and Forrest behind. Shankland up front, the Scotland bench and the three goalkeepers, Gunn, Gordon and Kelly. Hendry, McKenna. Ralston, Taylor and Tierney, the defenders. Jack and McGregor also on the bench, along with Che Adams. And Gibraltar, for their part, are uh, unchanged. It's uh, still Hankins in goal, Olivero, Lopez, Sargent and Jolly, uh, the back four. Scanlon, Annesley and Walker, Brito and Debar try to help out El Hamidi up front. But effectively, it is all 11 behind the ball for Gibraltar and it's somehow worked out for them so far mid it into the second half and a bright and sunny day in the Algarve here goes Forrest infield from the left lays it square to Gilmore just to the right of the edge of the D further wide is McCrory tucks back inside to Gilmore who whips the ball into the box a miscue by the number nine El Himidi and then steered across goal by Robertson good defending by Bernardo Lopez who has been excellent the Gibraltar centre half to stretch and clear that away facing his own goal it's back up wide with Robertson again to deliver from the left goalkeeper thought about coming then stayed at home and it's headed behind by uh, Ethan Brito for Scotland's seventh corner Gibraltar nil Scotland nil and here is Chris Iwellema. We're very much started in the same vein. Andy Robertson choosing the right pass, putting it right in the danger area. I just expect Shankland to anticipate that and try and get on the wrong, the other side of Lopez. They are great defending. And then Brutal with the, the header as well. But I want Christie to go challenge, try and keep the ball alive at the back end. Two minutes into the second half. And Gibraltar with more defending to do. At that end to the right-hand side, whipped in by Gilmore, headed over the top by Cooper. Got a good jump on it and right onto his forehead, but he seemed to maybe clip the upper part of the forehead, maybe, and it's just flown right up into the air and high over the bar. Well, he's in the shaded part as well, so you can't... He's watching the ball all the way, Joe. It's a free header. He actually brings his head down. It comes off the, 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 the crown. I don't, I don't understand. You know, I think put the forehead through it. Make sure you hit the target. And Steve Clark is watching on, taking notes from a position high up in the main stand. Uh, John Carver, the assistant, is standing on the touchline from a Scotland perspective. That's effort number 18 on goal now. And just two of those on target. Left of the centre circle is Christie. Leak little cushion header by McGinn into the path of Forrest. Angle against him into the box. He's just beyond Bernardo Lopez who lunged in. And Forrest can't believe that's not a penalty kick. Didn't look like Bernardo Lopez got anywhere near the ball there with Forrest 
trying to bear down on goal. Was there a touch off the ball from the defender? No way. Not a great deal of contact though, Chris Uelamo, maybe. Is that the only reason why there's not a penalty given? I just think James Forrest goes down very slow, doesn't he? There is contact just on the tip of the toe, so I understand why he's went to ground, but he went down in stages. You either got to kind of make, give the referee a decision to make there. You know, I think Lopez doesn't make any contact with the ball, but it is a... I don't know why he's went to ground. Robertson on the overlap from Forest Pass. He dinks in the cross to the back post. Christie with a looping Stop. header. And the goalkeeper can't get there. And in the end, he hangs on to it at the second attempt, Jalen Hankins. Was there a little bit of confusion at the back post as Christie tried to reach it? One of his teammates very nearly got in the way. And Christie should have left it probably yeah. for Shanklin, but was the communication there I'm not sure it was and it's still nil nil well we have to say it's another great ball from, from Andy Robertson there Shanklin has to communicate that to Christie you know he goes up Shanklin's free if anything communicate he can actually take it down first touch and do what he wants with it you know I just I'd, it's another big opportunity the ball the ball coming in is, is excellent from Andy Robertson just dinks it up to the back post but there's got to be an understanding that either Christie has to know that Shanklin's behind him and no one else well, I think that might be an injury problem for Gibraltar's goalkeeper here, Hankins. Not sure if he's hurt his finger in that little melee. He dropped the ball and then had to pounce on it at the second attempt. He's had a very good game on his international debut, Jalen Hankins. And, of course, they've got uh, a couple of substitute goalkeepers themselves, Gibraltar. But for Scotland, the longer the game goes on, the, the frustration will continue to grow. And from your perspective, Chris Iwellemo, watching this in the build-up to... The Germany game to start Euro 2024 in less than two weeks' time. How much concern is there for Steve Clark that they aren't just putting these chances away? Well, of course, there's, there's concern. You know, you, you've got to look at the where, where the goals have came from in the in the qualification group as well. You know, the likes of McTominay, seven and eight. You know, it's, a, it's an excellent yep. return. He sat on the bench. You know, John McGinn's out there in a, in a game. But when you're up against two... Two, two, two banks Gibraltar they're just getting everyone behind the ball they've got to find the way they've got to find the, the answer to break that down and that's where, where Scotland are struggling it's the exact same against Northern Ireland at Hamden Park you know they just got everyone behind the ball and said oh, come on then break us down we're going to play counter attack football and, and Scotland struggled the ball is on the right hand side for Scotland shuffled up that far right hand side for Gibraltar by Jolly but he's given possession straight back to Scotland again all Scotland in terms of the ball all Scotland in terms of the chances but it's still nil-nil. 51 minutes in now, live on TalkSport 2. All of the pitch is now in the shade as Forrest comes forward, darts the dead ball line, but well blocked off by El Hamidi. The central striker tracking back to help out his defenders, and there are plenty of players back behind the ball for Gibraltar. And eventually El Hamidi's clearance thunders off the chest of Kenny McLean and has gone straight out of play for a goal kick to Gibraltar, who, lest we forget, 12 defeats in a row, not kept a clean sheet in that time, conceded 48 goals. They were beaten 14-0 by France, 6-0 by the Netherlands. They lost 4-0 to both Wales and the Republic of Ireland. They haven't scored Gibraltar since 2022. And on another day, maybe Scotland would have racked up plenty of goals already. But somehow, with a little bit of good fortune attached, the 203rd ranked nation holding out well the whole point of this game Joe is to, to, to instill confidence in, in Scotland get players hitting the back of the net being dominant with the ball good habits before they go into a, a major tournament you know we're seeing they, yeah, they're controlling the game with the ball they can still move the ball a little bit quicker they can still create more chances but the chances they've created you know on another day it could be five or six and probably should be you know they should be asking more questions of Hankins in the Gibraltar goal a free kick here to Gibraltar about 10, 15 yards into the Scotland half. Standing over it is the captain, the number 10, Liam Walker, who is Gibraltar's joint all-time leading scorer. Five goals to his name. He's actually played a reverse ball straight out of play. A terrible ball by Walker, looking to set up his teammate Debar, who I don't think was expecting it at all. And for Gibraltar, it's an extremely rare opportunity to get the ball forward, but they've completely wasted. Why not just pump it into the box? Yeah, like you say, they've got some, some players there that can go quite aggressive in the air, go win their aerial duels, just put it right on the money and keep the ball in the right areas. They didn't do it. Billy Gilmore pivoting on the ball for Scotland. Ten yards shy of halfway. Scotland with Forrest going back via deflection 
towards the defensive third and Cooper Scotland quickly shuffle the ball over the halfway line now playing from left to right Kenny McLean scampering forward McCrory on his outside on the overlap McCrory with the orange boots on back to McLean little one touch ball by Gilmore lovely turn by Christie on the edge of the box but he can't smuggle it beyond that a flurry of defenders back behind the ball for Gibraltar well now coming forward on the counter attack there was a three on three situation for a moment but Scanlon the teenager who plays for Manchester United has got it all wrong and now Gibraltar have left a couple of gaps at the back that maybe Scotland can finally exploit. Robertson forward to McGinn. Angle tight inside the area, can't get the shot away. He's wriggled away from Jolly, the defender. Held up by McGinn, back to Robertson. First time left-footed cross. Deep to Shackland at the back post. A looping header back across goal. Headed away by Annesley. No real refinement in the way that Scotland structured that attack. It wasn't a good cross by Robertson. And a pretty poor header from Shankland as well. It's still nil-nil. Here they come again, the Scots. Forrest back to goal, back to Robertson, loads of time to deliver, pumps the ball to the back post, McCrory's up there, headed behind by Brito, and he thinks there was a, a deflection off McCrory, and I think the assistant is saying there was, so Gibraltar will get a goal kick, and actually Chris Uelamo, in the context, you'd have to say... Gibraltar are quite comfortable here really in the second half at 0-0 yeah I have to say I don't think asking too many questions in Scotland's favour I think the quality has dropped a little bit but like you say decision making you know McCrory was right there it, it was a corner you know just seen it back in the monitor as yeah, well it should be a corner but it should be a corner but you know they should still be be doing better you know the ball's coming in from Robertson you know wasn't wasn't great but it's a decision making with the header take the ball down you're in the 18 yard box you know go and try and make that shot your own and that's, that's something that I think McCrory needs to be doing a little bit better. But I, I agree with you, Gibraltar are comfortable. They know they're going to be getting asked a few questions. At the minute, they've got all the answers, defend them well. Uh, helping each other out as well, whenever there's overloads, they're making sure they're working very hard. And they even had the break there, where there's three, four, four against four. You know, on another day, Scanlon should do better. I think he should drive with it a little bit longer, commit the defender and then release it. But... Uh, fortunate for Scotland that uh, he, he gave his uh, possession. 39 in the world, Scotland. And Germany, their opponents in the first group game ranked at 16. Switzerland and number 19. Scotland will play them in Cologne and then the trip to Stuttgart to face Hungary, number 26 in the world. It is a fascinating Group A, and we'll bring you every Scotland game live over on Talk Sport. Here comes Scotland with McGinn, down by the corner flag. He's trying to tease and turn inside the defender, Sargent, who gets across, makes a good block. And that'll be yet another Scotland corner. Number eight, it's still nil-nil. 11 minutes into the second half. You've got to give Gibraltar credit for defending with real diligence. They're playing like it's the first game of the Euros for them. They're taking this very seriously. No, they are. You know, and you're looking at the likes of uh, Christie and McGinn. As Robertson delivers and Cooper's downward header is saved by the goalkeeper. Relatively straightforward save. And there was a Gibraltar player who went down inside the box there. It was Olivero. I think the referee would have given Gibraltar the free kick anyway. He certainly stopped the game. Cooper darting towards the penalty spot. Good downward header, but Hankins equal to it. Well, I'm still looking at that. It's came back in the moment. I've not really seen too much there. I think there's just a, a coming together of uh, McCrory and Porteous with Olivero there, but I don't know why he's, he's clutching the face. Again, another header there from, from Cooper. Straight at Hankins. You know, he's got the whole goal. He's risen well, he's made the contact, uh, and I think has to do better, in my opinion. And the ball is back with the Gibraltar goalkeeper, and I think the referee is going to do a simple drop ball here, uncontested, of course, these days, and goalkeeper Hankins in bright yellow on a very warm day on the Algarve. We had a drinks break in the first half, there'll probably be one in the second as well. Gibraltar have possession back again. You'd think, as we head closer to the hour mark, Chris Iwellamo, that... Scotland changes will be upcoming in the not too distant future not the best of back headers by Robertson but just enough on it to send it back to Xander Clark well you can see Gibraltar actually growing a little bit of confidence a few more players venturing forward putting putting the defensive unit of Scotland uh, under a little bit more pressure and this is where Scotland have to capitalise then so when they venture forward they're leaving holes in behind they have to move the ball a little bit better uh, at the minute when they're getting into that attack and third there's no end product no crosses coming in Gilmore, lovely reverse ball into the penalty area and James Forrest nearly through. Blocked off by Lopez, goes back out wide to Robertson. He crosses, back post is Christie and Shankland back to Christie! Hammers it into the top corner. Scotland finally get the breakthrough. 
Ryan Christie at the back post, beyond two or three in Gibraltar red, and then he lashed it beyond the goalkeeper. Relief for Scotland. It's a goal that's been coming really since the first minute, and Ryan Christie has got it. His first Scotland goal since 2022, and it's finally Gibraltar nil, Scotland one. Well, I'll take it, but I've got to say there's a there's a coming together between uh, Christie and Shanklin. You thought the, the, the opportunity was just going to get away from him there, but Christie does everything right. A little bit fortunate for the ball to kind of fall in his favour. Uh, but then again, he's just put everything through it, hits it into the, the roof of the net. It's an excellent finish. And like you say, one that was coming, hopefully now the confidence will be there. The pressure's off a little bit and there'll be a few more to, to add to that. Scotland finally score. Gibraltar finally broken down and the Tartan army have something to cheer on the Algarve. 700 or so Scotland supporters and a big beaming smile for Ryan Christie who had another very good season in the Premier League with Bournemouth and he gives Scotland the lead and you wonder now will the goals finally start to flow for the Scots. It was a, a slightly smuggled build-up or a, a middling build-up for uh, Christy, as you say, Chris, having to get Shankland almost out of the way, but nothing wrong with the finish. He's a good player. You know, I think technically, I think, picks up some excellent positions. Fantastic technician with the ball, and he does score important goals. You know, I remember that goal against Serbia. You know, I think uh, got us to the last, well, got us to the, well, penalty kicks, it got us to the last uh, Euros. So, big, big, uh, big, big goal it was. Scotland have won it back again straight away. Cooper wide to the left and Andy Robertson. Lots of time to dink a lovely ball into the box. It's chested down for Lawrence Shankland who lays it off to Gilmore. Gilmore in the area should have taken the shot. Not a player that scores many at all, Billy Gilmore. In fact, he's only scored one senior goal in his entire career. That was for Scotland last autumn. And you could see that he wasn't comfortable inside the penalty area with going for goal. And actually, arguably, Shankland should have struck a goal with two crits. Well, I agree with that. You know, I think the ball was sitting nicely for Shankland just to take it. Yeah, hit it through legs, but make sure you hit the target. The set to Gilmore was excellent. Again, is it confidence to come on and just put the foot through it? So I just think, yeah, two opportunities there to just get the shot away. Now gone at Gibraltar nil, Scotland one. Live on Talk Sport 2. England in action later on Talk Sport at St James's Park. Yeah, and then you can get in touch with the sports bar 03717 later tonight where you can have your say ahead of Euro 2024. Ball in by McGinn from the inside left channel headed away by Bernardo Lopez for Gibraltar. Well, you have to feel for Gibraltar now. They're behind again and their run without a clean sheet continues and they'll be sat back behind the ball for the last half an hour or so once more as Jolly gets a tackle in and Scotland get a throw in the left wing position you'd think Gibraltar will also start to wilt a little mentally now they put a lot of effort into the first hour and they've conceded and that should open some more gaps for Scotland well that defensive unit of Gibraltar is just getting deeper and deeper you know I think Scotland have you know got a little bit of speed in their play the ball's moving a little bit a little bit quicker albeit they're still working very hard without the ball Gibraltar making it very difficult Gilmore's lofted crossfield ball left to right chested down by Christie his little touch poking it infield on his left foot doesn't find Shanklin Scanlon was back to clear there for Gibraltar but McCrory with good industry is there to win the ball back Scotland capped inside the Gibraltar half as we welcome listeners from Talk Sports Scotland lead in Gibraltar by a goal to nil the goal has been scored by Ryan Christie Scotland predictably have been bombarding the Gibraltar goal throughout the game that we've had so far 62nd minute is where we're at and Scotland finally making the breakthrough and they're on the attack again with McCrory scampering in field back to Gilmore his first time cross is blocked by the Gibraltar captain Walker back to the goal scorer Christie all left foot he pings in that high diagonal ball it's headed away it'll drop down to Kenny McLean who cushions the header wide to the left and Robertson and Scotland have been continually on the attack their finishing touch had been lacking until Christie finally found the goal scoring touch to put them in front former Scotland striker Chris Arellamo is alongside me yeah it's been uh, it's been a good performance with the ball been dominant a lot of good chances created that they should have done better with you know I think that you can see the confidence it's, it's, it's picked up a little bit even after the goal you know I've got to say Gibraltar two banks everyone behind the ball defended very well blocks going winning that defensive header but still with the chances created it should be three four or five goals here uh, this, this evening 
All of this for Scotland about building up to that opening game of the Euros against the hosts, Germany. We'll be live inside the stadium in Munich, live on Talk Sport for that opening game of the tournament on Friday the 14th of June. And every game at Euro 2024 is, of course, live on the Talk Sport network. 63 minutes gone, and Scotland very nearly through there as Gilmore looked for Shanklin. Gibraltar cleared. It's Gibraltar nil, Scotland won. And Gibraltar on the attack here with Debar to El Hamidi, who's only 10 yards from the edge of the penalty area. Good ball to his left of the teenager Scanlon. Edge of the box, back now to Walker. El Hamidi again, just the one effort on goal for Gibraltar over the course of the entire game. It does surprise me, Chris, that on the couple of occasions they've had possession inside maybe the midway point of the Scotland half, they've gone backwards. They've got all the way back over the halfway line. You do think they're hardly going to ever get efforts in on goal playing like that why not just scoop the ball into the box and see what happens yeah you're spot on especially when Scanlon there he's, he's 1v1 with Porteous take him on you know get yourself in the box and then it's it's difficult for him to, to make the challenge but at the minute very easy for them just to come back and try and keep possession you've got to remember Joe they're spending a lot of time in this game without the ball so straight away you're, it takes a lot more out of the body mentally physically as well when you're chasing all the time so but they still have to be brave enough to, to ask those questions when they get into the right areas and Scotland have won it back with McCrory midway inside the Gibraltar half Gilmore strokes the ball right to left about 15 yards square to Robertson further towards that far side left touchline is Forrest who cuts in field onto the right foot lays it back to Gilmore and nearly 20 minutes into the second half and it's with Christie on the edge of the D Christie the scorer wide left to Robertson again left on edge of the penalty area that's a poor cross from the Liverpool man, the Scotland captain, overhit, out of play. There'll be some substitutions here, I think, certainly for Gibraltar. And indeed, a couple of changes for Scotland as well. Here comes Kieran Tierney on in place of Andy Robertson. So Scotland will stick with the uh, back four. Tierney for Robertson and Shea Adams as well. And will it be a straight swap for Shankland, I wonder? No. Forrest is going to come off. What do you make of it, Chris? Double change? Yeah, I, yeah, I don't mind it at all. You know, I think you're, look, you're looking at players that, especially Che Adams, need to get minutes in the leg. You know, Kieran Tierney for Robertson. Yeah, light for light. Down that left, left-hand left side. I think Forrest, yeah. I think he's he's come on. He's, he's done well. He's had opportunity. He's been creative. He's worked hard, especially with the, with the heat here tonight as well so no it's, 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 it's positive all round can she Adams go on and, and bring something a little bit different have that understanding with Shanklin as well that's something that we've not really seen uh, too often that understanding that relationship because there's going to be opportunity that they have to play together as well and here are the changes for Gibraltar as well Kean Ronan who plays for Kings Lynn Town replaces the 17 year old the Manchester United player Scanlon and off goes the number nine El Hamidi and it's a chance for 42-year-old Lee Casciaro, who scored against Scotland at Hampden. The only goal that Gibraltar have ever scored against Scotland to date. And only comes at the age of 42, Chris. He's not doing bad. Not bad at all. Fair play. <laughs> Fair play. So 1-0 Scotland lead, most importantly. And that double change. And Tierney has gone across towards the left-hand side, the left-back position, as you'd expect. And Adams has pushed into the central striking role and Shanklin looks like he's dropped slightly deeper, almost into the number 10 position, Chris. Yeah, but he, he knows that role, Shanklin. You know, he's, he's very comfortable showing up and, and trying to hold play up in, in, in Lincoln, so I think that's an important one. Well, Kieran Tierney's gone down straight away. Not a good challenge by Debar. We know that Kieran Tierney is a player who's struggled for several seasons now with injury you've seen it again on our little monitor Chris yeah it's a sore one you know it's just uh, the, the, the studs just came down right on the ankle bone as well good uh, to see he's okay yeah he's, he knew you can see by by the face when the monitor went on him there that uh, yeah it was a sore one but he's up a 1-0 Scotland last quarter of the game fouled by Debar who the credit to him has chased everything the player furthest forward for Gibraltar but he's sent Liam Cooper sprawling that's an obvious Scotland free kick it's probably about as comfortable a 1-0 as you'll ever see from a Scotland perspective so far they will be frustrated not to have scored more and maybe maybe two or three more still to come and that's a question I think you, you put yourself under pressure when you when you make these games you know it's, it's there to serve a purpose the performance has been good yeah it's definitely got the 
got the got the obviously the, the work rate up for the, the players, you know, but you still want the other side of it, you know, creating chances which they have done, putting chances away which to be fair they haven't. But it's so so important that the players have got the minutes in, in the bank as well and take some sort of confidence positives out of this performance. Balls with McGinn on the near side, the right, he's gone out to the right wing position, whips a lovely ball in left footed, Shanklin couldn't get there and it's gathered by the goalkeeper Hankins. In swinging ball from McGinn. Maybe just a touch over hit if you're being really critical. Well, you have to be. You know, I think with the quality of McGinn's got, both right and left, if that's into the body, you know, the defensive line's always running back towards their own goal. If it's into the body, the likes of Che Adams or, or Shatland can just hold that for advancing players just a sec to get a shot away. So it's important. That was definitely over hit there from John McGinn. Stuart Armstrong, John Souter and Scott McTominay not in the squad today. All three are injured. Steve Clark has said that there's a chance that they'll play some part against Finland and ideally you want to give everybody minutes surely in the warm-up match that Scotland will have left after today and just over 20 minutes to go here on the Algarve and Gibraltar nil Scotland one is the score and the ball is with Porteous just shy of the halfway line and touch wide to Gilmore hugging the touchline near side the right is McCrory McCrory back to Gilmore again it's been a useful workout this for Scotland and that ultimately is the most is the most important purpose of a game like this in the build-up to a major tournament and of course you want to make sure that you get through it without sustaining any injuries either good tackle by Sergeant of Gibraltar one of the centre halves on Shankland but just as quickly Scotland inevitably are there to win it back well I'm just looking at you know the likes of when McCrory uh, and Tierney they come to show for the centre back the defender comes out with them with the back that leaves space in behind for the likes of John McGinn and Christie to, to ask those questions because they do it. Look, the drop begins in that area just now. It should be a little clip into the into the channel. A little ball over the top by Gilmore as if to illustrate that. Inside right channel, Shea Adams is there, kept it in play. It wasn't the best of passes by Gilmore. Gibraltar have cleared only as far as Gilmore and live with the edge of the 18-yard area, very tenacious as ever. A little ball squared in field as run to the feet of Kenny McLean. McLean pings it to his left. Easy for Tierney to get possession under no threat whatsoever. He's just got past Cacciari like he's not even there. Great cross, high to the far post. Well dealt with by Brito. Didn't really attack it with any great gusto there. And John McGinn nor Adams at the back post. McGinn has turned away neatly from Brito though. He's into the box down by the dead ball line. Held up. Back out wide to McCrory. First time cross towards Adams. Headed away. Good header that by Bernardo Lopez again. It's with Gilmore. Goes back to the halfway line. A frustrating afternoon in a sense for Scotland that they haven't scored far more than just the single goal. Tierney infield to Christie. Little glancing touch back to Kenny McLean. And Gibraltar, as you say, Chris, even deeper now. They're really defending the edge of the 18-yard box. They've got no in attacking intent at all. They've worked very hard. They're visibly tiring now. And Casciaro is... The sub who's come on, not really up with the pace of the game at all. He's committed a foul. And actually, the referee here with 19 minutes to go, I think, has said, let's have the drinks break in the second half. He has done that. So where are we, Chris? 1-0 Scotland. What have they got out of this game well, so from, far? From a player's point of view, it's, it's an excellent run out. You know, in the heat, getting the minutes in the legs, showing some nice touches with, with the ball, creating chances, getting into the right positions to get on the end of those chances. Now, from a from a media and a punditry point of view, yeah, they're going to get criticism because it's not they've not they're not scored the the, the, the regular Five six or nil, six or the, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But you know, from a player's point of view and from a manager's point of view, you've seen enough. It's a good workout in this temperature as well. Yeah, they've got into possession to create good opportunities. Uh, yeah, we want, we want to see more goals because that's that's what that's what's going to put put points in the board and, and, and get you through to the next stage. And, the, and a lot of the talk coming in was about. No Lyndon Dykes, you, you look at replacing him. As you say, Che Adams is the one who's still likely to start anyway. But that, that talk about goal scoring and the central front man, it's going to dominate again, isn't it? That, that problem hasn't really gone away. Well, it has. You, you, when you're, well, it hasn't at all. When you're looking at the likes of Scott McTominay, John McGinn, leading the line, uh, being the, the main threats for us. But that's, I think that with Scotland, that's a, a role of that, that striker. You have to be selfless. Yeah, you have, to, you have to bring goals now and again, but you also have to create... And, and, and bring others into play and that's why McGinn and McTominay have been outstanding uh, for Scotland with the, on, on the goal front here come a couple more Scotland changes off goes Billy Gilmore Ryan Jack 
taking to the field and uh, Callum McGregor of Celtic is going to come on as well and Kenny McLean is the other man who's been replaced the two defensive midfielders have come off well just like for like you know Callum McGregor great to see him back in great form as well Ryan Jack you know I think this calendar year 13 minutes he's played so definitely another one that needs the minutes and I mean a fantastic technical player can do everything very very well can control box to box if he needs to be but he just sits in front very very good technical player his distribution is excellent it's just good to see him out there again well he's gone forward straight away for the free kick Ryan Jack just left Rangers of course after an injury hit final season at the club the seven years he spent with Rangers and John McGinn stands over the free kick plenty forward here for Scotland 1-0 they lead so we've had the little drinks break and there'll be 16 and a half minutes plus any added time to go Scotland from left to right towards a Again, one of the empty ends of the stadium, whipped in by McGinn to the back post. Ryan Jack is there, first touch to pull it back, and it's scooped over the top by Shankland. Not an easy chance with his back to goal, tried to hook it over his shoulder, but miles too high. Yeah, he's been feeding off scraps tonight, hasn't he? You know, it's Ryan Jack that actually keeps the ball alive and does the right thing. You know, but uh, it's just behind him there, Shankland. He's, you know, you, you've got to gamble, so you either try and go in the front foot, or you hang back, you know, and he was kind of stuck in between there, uh, Shanklin, but he has been feeding off scraps. But again, it's one of those, you know, you have to you have to keep going, you have to keep doing the right things, and that opportunity will just present itself, and then that's the moment that you're going to be judged on. 22 attempts on goal for Scotland. One has found the back of the net. Uh, Gibraltar with Dubar, right wing position, trying to dart infield in between two white Scotland shirts, and at the end of it all, uh, Cooper's gone down injured, it looks like. Cooper and Dubar have collided could it be a knee problem it looks like a knee problem for Cooper yeah it's a, a thundering collision between him and Debar right onto the right knee of Liam Cooper and uh, you don't see Liam Cooper go down very easily at all he has done now though no you don't that's uh, that's a straight on knee to knee isn't it but I think uh, if anything it'll be knee and just uh, a dead thigh there for, for Cooper but he looks in a, a lot of discomfort so hopefully uh, he'll be all right. But you just it's, it's, his foot wasn't grounded, so hopefully it's not jarred. 15 minutes to go here. I've just seen a replay on our monitor in the commentary position of the half chance at best for Shanklin back to goal, trying to almost hook it over his shoulder, overhead kick star, but couldn't keep it down. I think it spun off his shin. And it, for all the chances Scotland have had, I mean, Handley had, could have had a hat-trick in the first half. We saw uh, Kenny McLean... And Christie, who has scored, eventually maybe should have scored before that. In fairness to Shankland, he, he, he's not had that, that golden chance in front of goal at all, has he? Well, that's it. It's just not fallen to him. You know, and I think when, when Scotland are in good possession of the ball, Shankland's very comfortable in coming and showing up. Get yourself as close to the opposition goal as you possibly can because you know the likes of McCrory and uh, Christie or... Forrest and, and Robertson down the front is going gonna, is gonna to get into positions that they can give you the service that you want so I think that's sometimes where you've got to be a little bit selfish because that's what you're going to get judged upon Well I think they're going to have to take Cooper off here Chris because the conversation between him and the physio looked to me to be like to, to be one where he's suggesting he can't continue Gibraltar are going to make a change off goes the captain Walker and on comes Evan Dejaro but uh, much more importantly from a Scotland perspective uh, Liam Cooper, the sub is about to be subbed, came on at half time. And Scott McKenna, who spent the second half of last season on loan at Copenhagen from Nottingham Forest to, to make sure that he got some football because he is effectively frozen out of the Nottingham Forest setup and maybe didn't expect to get some game time late on today, but he will get some game time, Chris. Yeah, it's important. You know, I think uh, you have to be ready. You know, I think disappointing one there. I don't think you, you want to take any chances if you're, you're Cooper. If you want to play on, you watch me get yourself off, get it looked at, uh, whatever you need to do. But yeah, McKenna will be ready and steady away. He's, he's one of those players, he's, he's always a 7 or 8 out of 10, but he brings that aggressive quality, good with his head in both boxes. And from set play, is very, very important. Now, we hope, looking at Liam Cooper as he sort of trudges behind the goal, he's not being helped by the physio as he walks, he's limping a little bit. You'd like to think that's just a knock and you need an ice pack and a, a couple of days rest. You'd like to think it's probably the physio as well that's probably in direct communication with the, the yeah. manager and his staff to say, you know what, let's let's just get fresh legs on, let's not take any risks because it's already with injuries depleted squad. You can hear the Tartan Army bagpipes, they'll travel to Germany in their numbers for the finals. 
They'll be there in Munich. We'll be there in Munich live on Talk Sport for the opening game. And Christie just went down momentarily there, but he's quickly back on his feet. Christie back to goal. 1-0 to Scotland. 12 minutes to go of normal time. You would talk sport to them. Might be quite a bit of added time here. Maybe four or five minutes because of the injury to Cooper. And down goes Shankland on the edge of the box. No foul given by the referee. He has to be stronger, Virgil. Shankland has to be stronger when it comes in. He's trying to hold up and he felt a little bit of con contact on the back. Soft. Be strong. You know, you've got control of the ball. Why look for a free kick there when you've got advancing players? Just put it into the path and go on with the game there. Don't look for little free kicks. Well, Scotland, as Cooper gets applauded by the uh, Scottish supporters. Lots of sunglasses on show. Lovely day for it uh, in this part of Europe on the Algarve. And Scotland are going to end their run of seven games without a win. First win since the 8th of September. Uh, last year and a victory in Cyprus in Euros qualifying really important victory ultimately the last of the qualifying campaign and those five wins from five to start that qualifying group were key for the Scots and uh, Cooper's spoken as well about even against a team like Gibraltar you get a clean sheet that helps with confidence as well doesn't it? Well, well you, you five, five wins out of five then you play England Spain France yeah. you know so so I understand that run away and, from and, home as and well. you've already qualified yeah. so there's, there is going to be a little bit of a lull you know you've done your job takes it out the squad but mentally you have to get back to business back to winning ways and being a, a strong defensive unit is going to be so key in that opening game in particular little touch in field little depth touch by Christie but he can't find a teammate tried to flick a little reverse ball into the path of Shankland Scotland good industry to win it back Shankland and Adams in combination haven't really seen Adams at all involved since he came on 10 minutes to go here 1-0 Scotland lead so when you say that that you've not seen Adams at all it's when when you're playing against two, two, two de defensive units look everyone behind the ball so as a, as a striker you've got to make your own space you're very reliant on the service that you're getting whereas Shankland was coming out of that and, and, and coming and showing up allowing the space for Christie and McGinn to get in behind and even Billy Gilmore on, on occasion was getting into those those areas so Adams he has to find a way but against the likes of a, a Germany a Switzerland a Hungary you, there is going to be space but you're going to be playing higher further away from the opposition goal and not getting so much of the ball but you're going to have a lot more space to, to make things happen Jack midway inside the Gibraltar half wide to the near side Portis is making a an underlapping run, little touch in field by McCrory to find a Shanklin with his back to goal, back out wide to Porteous, his first time cross is blocked and then he's tripped by the uh, retreating defender Olivero, who has now gone down and the referee's given Scotland a free kick, I think it's hit Olivero where it really hurts there. Yeah, it's a sore one, he's, Ryan Portis has just got away from him yeah, and I think, yeah, I think he's just came down on the, the heel of Porteous there. Free kick to Scotland, Porteous will stay forward. And Scotland, can they add any further goals late on here? It doesn't look like being a, a really thumping win, but performance-wise, in terms of the way they've kept the ball, Scotland, the chances they've created, I think that's been a positive for them. Definitely. They, they, they should have scored more, but these matches are all about refining your players. McGinn takes a dreadful free kick. It is completely overhit, totally misplaced and behind for a goal kick actually without even bouncing so unlike him as well you know I think uh, he's, he's, he's given the little nod there for, for, for to make the run I think it's Christie just trying, if anything if you miss all the players at least uh, ask, ask the question of, of, of Hankins there, if it's just coming into his goal with all the bodies running in front if someone can get across the front and make a slight contact, steer it goalwards then so be it but it was, it was nowhere near Goalkeeper Hankins will clear downfield. He's had a good debut, yeah. the uh, Gibraltar goalkeeper, international debut for uh, Jalen Hankins, who plays for uh, the FCB Magpies in Gibraltar. A throw for Scotland in the left-back position. Tierney just shy of halfway, looks for options. They've kept going, Scotland, and they've, they've, you know, they, they've been trying to score since minute one, and that has continued even despite taking the lead. On another day, maybe they would have scored six or seven. McCrory outside right channel near side the right for Scotland back infield with a little square ball to Jack and now McGregor McGregor the number eight wide to the left and Tierney 
Tierney looks up, we're in the 83rd minute now. Scotland from left to right, Tierney on the attack far side. Good cross is blocked at the near post by Casciaro. That will be a, a Scotland corner, number nine, in just a few moments. The referee is, I just thought for a second, was he looking to the near side touchline? I don't think there's any more changes for Scotland on the way imminently. England against Bosnia-Herzegovina later on on Talk Sport. We'll bring you a full commentary of that. Make sure you download the app. It's free and easy to download ahead of the Euro starting. Christie, left-footed out, swinging corner, looping to the back post. Scott McKenna couldn't get there. Smuggled behind by Jolly and Scotland's corner count now into double figures. Yeah, I think if you're Steve Clark and you're looking at it, I think with the ball, Scotland have performed well. Shown, shown real quality. I think chances created. They've, they've done the same in this heat as well, Joe. You know it's been a, an excellent, an excellent training exercise that they take a lot of positives from. In swinging corner from McGinn is poor again. Easy for the goalkeeper. Six yard box. Won't take an easier corner than that at any stage. The goalkeeper Hankins, but Scotland have got it back immediately on the halfway line, and now the ball is at the feet of Tierney Tierney nice pass threaded up the inside left channel but Adams couldn't get there cleared away by Sergeant Downfield I don't think there's been any real frustration from the Scotland supporters I think they've enjoyed their afternoon early evening largely of course they'd have wanted to have scored more but they've not exactly got on the backs of the players and that's completely understandable I guess the question for Scotland is Chris against Finland on Friday can they be much more clinical than they have been tonight? Well, well, they have to. I think uh, if you're looking at a, a couple of individuals, I think they'll they'll be a little bit disappointed with a performance. I think they'll feel afterwards that they could have done a little bit more to showcase. John McGinn's cross. Adams thunders it into the back post. That's a clinical finish. And Shea Adams shows exactly why he'll surely be leading the line for Scotland in that opening game of Euro 2024 when it came his way he rammed it home and how Gibraltar nil Scotland 2 well it's more like it Adams just staying away from it it's an excellent little ball dink to the back post he's watching it all the way and he just puts the laces through it we've got to say I think it's McGinn is it he just turns it's an excellent little clip from McGinn uh, and that's an excellent finish isn't it watching the ball all the way making sure the connection's right the goal does not move Joe right into the top left hand corner fantastic finish from uh, Che Adams here first Scotland goal since June 2022 and a player who had a great season in the championship last year Shea Adams earning promotion back to the Premier League with Southampton there were rumours he might leave the club in January so he comes into the Euros in good goal scoring form and underlining that to make it 2-0 to Scotland confirmed victory and Gibraltar meanwhile are going to make a change off goes uh, TJ Debar and Jaden Bartolo who plays in non-league in England with Wilston is going to replace Debar but for Scotland and Adams it's again another reminder that he's going to be the main man through the middle in Munich on the 14th of June no question we'll get another word from Chris in a moment Scotland are on the attack straight from kickoff Christie's ball into the box takes a bounce headed away uh, by uh, Brito for Gibraltar and then it's thumped forward downfield good clearance away by Porteous as the ball was bouncing towards the edge of the Scotland penalty area yeah great finish Chad Adams you'd have been proud of that Chris as a, as a front man yourself yeah it was an, it was an excellent finish but 20 minutes on, on, on the pitch you've got a goal you know what that will do to his confidence it doesn't matter who the opposition is it's an international goal you know and that's that's exactly what these games are for for, for like you say the strikers offensive players to go out and do exactly that and, and, and get that confidence to take into the, the, the tournament 2-0 Scotland and well again fair reflections and all that it, it, it's a little fairer realistically um you would you would think six or seven nil would probably tell you the story of the game best, but Scotland at least a little more efficient there when McGinn found out. I have to agree with that. But as a training exercise, yeah. you know, to go out there, get the minutes in the legs for certain players. You know, McCrory down this right hand side, you know, I've been probably overly critical. You know, it is warm out there. He has brought, he has got the ball. I think he can be a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more direct when he gets the ball. Take your man on every time. Like now, open up and get at your man. Here is McCrory. Live with the edge of the 18-yard box and now uh, Ryan Jack in possession. Jack 15 yards from the corner of the penalty area, plays a square ball 
into a central area where McKenna's waiting. McKenna steered it wide left to the far side of the field. Tierney is one-on-one -on -one with uh, Lee Casciaro of Gibraltar. Two minutes of normal time to go. Tierney skips beyond Casciaro with total ease, pulls it back towards the middle of the penalty area and it's turned behind for a corner. And that's what I'm talking about. What does Kieran Tierney do there? He gets at his man. He's, you know, he, he takes him, runs him to the line, gets in behind. I've not seen McCrory do it once. You know, and he, he has that in his game. And Aaron Hickey and Nathan Patterson does exactly that. And they, and they create off the back of it, Joe. I don't understand, but this is his opportunity, isn't it? Well, I think, I think we'll see Ralston on Friday night. Yep, so if you know that as a player, does sure. it not, does it not, it should it not be a more of an incentive to do exactly that and do what everyone else can do? I get you. I get you. play safe. No, it's a good point. A corner for Scotland, far side as we look at it. Yeah, Ryan Christie will take it. It'll be left footed, out swinging, heading towards the final minute of normal time. McKenna trying to get his head to it. The referee had spotted a foul. A free kick to Gibraltar. It's hard, isn't it, I suppose, for someone like Ross McCrory because it's your Scotland debut as well. So is there an element, even against a team like Gibraltar, of you, you want to make sure you make no mistakes first and foremost? Well, that, 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 is, the, that is what it is. You're playing safe because you, you don't want to make the mistakes, but more often than not, you've still got to showcase what your strengths and qualities are. Now, he's a very good technical player. He has a fantastic engine. Uh, so it's all about, boom, every time he gets the ball, is he making something happen? And I think too many times he's came back and played safe. Scotland throw, left back position. We're heading towards stoppage time now. 30 seconds of normal time to go. Kieran Tierney has been useful since he came on. And again, um, lots of questions for Steve Clark. We'll, have a, we'll get a little bit of time after the final whistle. A couple of minutes to have a word with Chris about it. Again, against Finland, does he does he change shape? Does he play with a three? I guess it might depend on who he's got available. Do you look at a, a right wing back role for Ralston? Maybe that's been talked about. Plenty in the build up. Here's McKenna in the centre circle for Scotland. Now Portis, halfway line, four added minutes. What do you reckon, Chris? Do you, do you change shape on Friday night? I think he probably will. You know, I think you you know, depending on, on, on who he has available for selection, you're looking at probably a, a Portis, Henry, Tierney as the three, and then a Robertson, uh, and like you say, a, a Ralston uh, down the right hand side, with then a, a Callum McGregor. And to be fair he has a he has a pick who he wants it to be beside Callum McGregor. Jack corner of the penalty area, a little reverse ball for Shankland who's standing on the dead ball line, tees it up for Christie to hang across up high to the back post and it's well dealt with by the Gibraltar man Ronan who flicked ahead of clear, 40 seconds into four added and Scotland are 2-0 up, we'll have updates of that uh, Scotland-Finland game, we'll keep you up to date into commentary of England against Iceland on Talk Sport on Friday evening then all attention turns to the tournament proper. Can't wait for it to get underway. And these warm-up matches are a really useful exercise, an intriguing exercise to see what sort of shape teams are in and still decisions to be made for Steve Clark. We don't know the final squad yet, of course. Here is McKenna in the centre circle. On to McGregor. Silky touch to find McGinn. Little flick back to Porteous. The only question is now whether well, Scotland can add one final goal before the end of stoppage time. Yeah, the, the, the thing about the squad, Joe, as well, I, I was surprised that it was only a 28-man provisional squad. You, you know, we, we, the possibility that injuries have happened with London Dykes, you'd have liked to have brought a few more personnel in. I know it's a harder decision for a manager when you've got to let players go, but this is part and parcel of it, isn't it? You know, players in the right frame of mind, the right body condition, they're, they're with the group. And then, OK, if everyone is fit uh, and available for selection, then that manager has those difficult conversations to have. Well, two goals in the end for Scotland and two fine finishes. Adams in particular, thundering right-footed volley. And the Tartan Army are in a relaxed mood and a, a, a joyful mood into the early evening here now. About 90 seconds to go. There's there's a high foot from Adams on Sargent. And Gibraltar have tried their best to make it some sort of contest and actually for an hour or so, even though Scotland looked inevitably like they would score, Gibraltar had frustrated them. But there was never really any doubt. Even with Scotland's profligacy, 
in attack in the first half. Poor touch by McCrory. Gibraltar throw on the halfway line. We know that there are a couple of question marks positionally for Steve Clark. Patterson and Hickey would be shooing to compete for the right back, right wing back position if they were fit. It's not the case. Ball in by Jolly for Gibraltar and Xander Clark just watches that carefully into his grasp. He's probably had five, six touches over the course of the game. The Scotland keeper, he won't have an easier game ever in his international career. Yeah, I have to agree with that. A fantastic character, proper switched on. One of my old teammates at St. Johnson as well, Xander. Just a great personality to have in the dressing room as well, Joe. And that's what you need as well. You've got to remember when you're away in camp, it's so important that you've got good energy there. You know, big characters, big players, the likes of McGinn, who's, who's the joker of the group, makes everyone laugh. It's needed because you're away, you're living in each other's pockets for, for weeks on end. Hopefully it'll be a, a, good, a good month out there. Tierney, midway inside opposition territory. Now McGregor, out to the left-hand side, and Christie, little touch by uh, Adams into the path of Christie. It was a good move until the final pass. And cleared away by Sargent, high up over the halfway line, still bright and sunny overhead as the referee brings a halt to the game and Scotland have won with ease here in Gibraltar 2-0 the final score and the penultimate step on the journey to Euro 2024 is complete here for Scotland a performance where they enjoyed complete control of proceedings there are questions though in terms of Scotland's finishing ability so many chances created in the end only two goals were scored both came in the second half on the R mark Ryan Christie with the first Che Adams late on making it 2-0 I wonder really what we learnt about Scotland that we didn't know before the game. I'm not sure there have been any great surprises, but if nothing else, there have been minutes handed to players who will be important over the course of the Euros campaign. It is a first win in eight in all competitions for Scotland and a clean sheet as well. So in most senses, job done for Scotland. The only question is over their first half profligacy in particular. They should have scored more, but it has finished Gibraltar nil, Scotland two. And I think more positives than negatives overall going into that final warm-up match against Finland. And then, of course, the start of Euro 2024 against the hosts Germany on the 14th of June, Chris Oelema. Yeah, definitely a lot more positives, you know, uh, the little knock obviously Cooper you know that'll be a, a concern but it's a good training exercise got the minutes in the legs controlled the game without really any defensive risk there you know yeah if you're going to be over the critical definitely should have scored more goals than the two they got but clean sheet you know people really put in some good individual performances in control of the game uh, and like you say it's like you know, you look at a Shankland, he'll be disappointed he's, he's, he's not got on the score sheet tonight, but he'll, he'll feel better for the minutes that he's got. Well, there'll be changes, Chris, against Finland, no question about that on Friday. I did tell you during commentary, I'd ask you this question, though, as it stands, and perhaps assuming that Stuart Armstrong, Scott McTominay and John Suter are are going to be fit and going to be in contention and there are no major surprises between now and then in terms of Steve Clark's final squad. What 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 is your team for that opening game immediately? It'll have to be fairly quick, yeah, well, but what would be your team? Well, I think Scott McTominay comes in out of those three that you've just mentioned. I think Angus Gunn in goals. I think that it'll be a, a three uh, with, with, with two wing-backs. That'll be Portis, Henry and Tierney. With Robertson on, on the left, I think Ralston will, will be on the right. You've yeah. got Callum McGregor, Billy Gilmore sitting in, holding. And then that three that's in behind Che Adams will be, you're looking at John McGinn, Scott McTominay uh, and Ryan Christie, in my opinion. And that, that I think Steve Clark already knows, albeit everyone's going to be available for selection, that'll be the team that starts against Germany. And Liam Cooper did have to go off injured in that second half. It looked more like it was a relatively minor knock more than anything else. And again, another key thing about warm-up matches is that you come through it without injuries to any key players and there will be changes on Friday against yeah. Finland as well so they're in a they're in a decent position aren't they here Scotland but again 
there'll be questions, won't there, about finishing ability, and there'll be more questions about whether Steve Clark looks to bring in somebody like a Tommy Conway, maybe, with Lyndon Dykes out of the Euros altogether. Well, I don't know if, you, if he's left it too late to bring in these types of players. You know, the, the championship sure. season finished on the 4th of May. Yep. Joe, so you're thinking, what have those players done? You know, that's why I think they should be in the provisional squad and there's more players uh, cut out of it yep. for when, 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 this, when the time's made to make that, that selection. Uh, but, yeah, I think that, you know, I think on, on against Finland that there's going to be quite quite a few changes. Uh, but it's a training exercise. It's ticks. It's, t- it's, t- it's done the job but you're looking at the players they'll know themselves because uh, players are their own worst critics that they should have scored a lot more goals tonight but on the other side there's many positives to take from it and the key thing Chris just finally here is look I don't think this game in particular tells us really anything about whether Scotland are going to get out of the group when it comes to the finals but you're optimistic it's a tough group Germany the holders Switzerland Hungary lots of tournament experience but you know what Scotland will be better off for the experience that they got at Euro 2020 as well. Yeah, they're not here just to make up the numbers. You know, I think they they were left a little bit frustrated uh, with the, with the last Euros. You know how things played out. I think they've got a, a, an opportunity to put things right. You know, in, in, in games where they've shown that they can be competitive uh, against the best teams in the world, and that is what is needed. And on the day, they have to be uh, a little bit of luck as well. Chris, great stuff. We'll, we'll see you there. Still. We'll see you there. Friday the 14th. Chris and I will be in Munich. Live for the opening game of the European Championships is Germany against Scotland. Hope you can join us throughout the tournament. Of course, every game will be live across the TalkSport network. 7.45 tonight, England against Bosnia and Herzegovina live on TalkSport from St. James's Park. So kick off in, what, just over 45 minutes time. And then after then, Scotland fans are very welcome to join the conversation on the sports bar from 10 until 1. The number that you'll need, 03717. Double two, double three, double four.